Hey, what's up, ecosystem? It's Fleet February, which means it's time for Fleet Fun. It's Tuesday nights live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back again to Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. So that's the welcome back car hauler, and you're back with me. It's Tuesday Nights Live. You know we're here every Tuesday night talking about all things car hauling. If you're into car shipping, you want to learn about that. You want to start up a car hauling business. You want to learn about car hauling brokering. You're a transport lead generator. You're a... Uh, just trying to scope out the system and learn more about it. Well, this is the show. This is the car hauling business channel. Um, and it is growing. It is accelerating. And I'm really excited to be back with you. Uh, this is the 73rd Tuesday night in a row. And, um, you know, so I'm over here. I'm looking. I've got a screen over here that I'm looking at because we're about to go into the live chat. But I just want to remind you, if you're new to this channel, I'm going to kind of give you a guide here in the beginning, and then this is going to kind of run away. It's a runaway freight train of a show. Um, I have an interview, go into a live panel. I'll have a special guest. And this is Auto Transport Intel, where car haulers work together. It's a drama-free, safe zone. If you've got a question, if you want to share information, you can do that here. Learn car shipping, watch Auto Transport Intel. Um, all right, so we're back, and um, you guys are already in the live chat. That's cool. We're going to get to you in a second. So, again, if you're new to the show, uh, you know, I've got the welcome back. And, by the way, let me know, is the audio okay? Is the video okay? Um, I, uh, You guys know that a couple weeks ago my laptop needed a Band-Aid. And, plus, man, I, this is the longest I've ever been sick. So I am trying to uh, put on the best show I can with what I have at my disposal. So in a couple minutes, we're going to go into the live chat. We're going to say hello. And I love saying hello to the live chat. That's actually a long segment now. I'm going to spend about 20 minutes in the live chat, maybe something like that. Maybe jump on a soapbox, do a comedy routine. Then we're going to go into industry news. And you guys know that I run everything here. Uh, this is a solo media production. So if I screw up, let me know. But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm running the titles and the and the Zoom meetings and, you know, I'm going crazy and directing traffic. So and then industry news is all the memes that nobody else wants. Send them to autotransportintel at gmail.com. I want the memes. I want the crazy stuff. And I want the information. All of it happens in industry news. Big fan of that segment. Then we're going to go into our first interview um, at about 45 minutes into the show. We're going to bring on Michael from Fleet Shield. Now, Michael um, got introduced to me through Shaggy's Consulting and Training, so shout out to Shaggy's. Um, he usually makes it in the show. There he is. What's up, Shaggy? Shaggy's in the show. So um, Shaggy's in the live chat, so if you have a question for Shaggy, all things freight hauling and training, and, and man, it's a, the freedom to learn movement, whew, that thing's a bulldozer. Uh, and then at an hour and a quarter into the show, another friend of Shag is consulting. Sam from Pelican Trucking Insurance is going to be on the show, as well as Ty from CTS. You guys know Ty. And Sam has been on the show once before. He's going to join the discussion panel. We're also um, we're running Sam's um, Pelican Trucking Insurance ads this month. 
So if you've got a question for Sam, this is a great time to ask it, but he's always available, and I'll be promoting him through Facebook throughout the month. So really excited to have Fleet Insurance, Fleet Telematics in the show and then we're going to have a special guest. I love doing, uh, you know, at two hours in, if you haven't had enough, it's time for a special guest. We're going to bring in Candy from Jacksport Storage Seaport Service. She's in Jacksonville. She's helping car haulers. Actually, I just sent uh, some business cards to you, Candy. So those are in the mail right now. You've got business cards in the mail. And I'm excited. We're going to talk about Matt's um Matt's 2019 um, in a bit also. So I'm excited. This is another big show. This is a good two and a half hours of your life. And um, and we're here. So, um, man, I love you, man. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Thank you so much. Um, so, yeah. So let's get, say hello to the live chat. Also, um, this is a question for you, Ty. Ty was telling me that. So I've got, I'm on a different laptop and the screen is wider and maybe better resolution, maybe higher frames per second, and maybe it shows up better on the cell phone. So if that's true, let me know. Let me hit the test button there. And uh, so, yeah, just let me know. Let me know if that's coming through loud and clear. Oh, you have a booth? Oh, that's awesome, dude. Okay, I got to jump into the live chat. Um, okay, Lamont was here first. What's up, Lamont? Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. You know, you guys... Being in the live chat means a lot. And actually, you know, just like before the concert starts and the crowd starts to fill in, seeing some people in the front row just hanging out and waiting. Lamont, thank you for being front row tonight, hanging out and waiting. I really appreciate that. So, um, and, you know, I try to start promptly at 8. And, um, you know, we don't do any of that funny stuff. Like, okay, yeah, we're just going to wait for some more people to come in here. So, uh yeah, I'm going to like, you know, drink my LD Kool-Aid. Let's just wait for some more people. Yeah, see, like I said, we don't do any of that here. We don't do any of that. So thanks, Lamont. Really appreciate it. Um, M Fields, hey, Jay. Happy Tuesday. It's Marcus from Exclusive Luxury Transport in Las Vegas. Well, thank you for joining me again, M Fields, Marcus from Exclusive Luxury Transport in Las Vegas. By the way, uh, Marcus, I think of you, and there's, there's several others. Um, there is um, Eben at uh, Synthetic Oil Protection, and there's some other folks in Vegas. Listen, I hope you guys petition to bring Auto Transport Intel to Vegas in the fall. That would be a killer live event. We're talking about maybe Florida in uh, the spring, so... But Matt's is first. Matt's, March, end of March 2019. Listen, guys, great announcement. Check this out. It's official as of the other day. Auto Transport Intel is now part of the official media and press with credentials at the Mid-America Trucking Show Matt's 2019 in Louisville at the end of March. So I'll be in the press room with the heavy hitters and traditional print. And um, I'm super excited about this, man. It's going to be a great show. So working on putting more information and stuff for that show together. And so I'm um, really excited about that. Lamont is from Stay Loaded Transport. Good name, dude. Like that. All right, cool. So Stay Loaded Transport. Shout out. By the way, uh, shout out to Nate's PC and Havoc Dynamic. Dude, Nate hooked me up. This is the second week in a row. I got this laptop. I needed help. My laptop needed a Band-Aid. Nate hooked me up. Havoc, Dynamic, and Nate's PC and IT. Seriously, you know, having an IT guy that you can call, you know, it's like, okay, it's like that Swiss Army knife of help. You need a lawyer, an accountant, and an IT guy. And I got, well, at least I got the IT guy. <laughs> Dude, Nate, thank you so much. Really, man. Awesome. Awesome help. Um, also, Bill from ba uh, Bill Bad Apples. Bill is with us. Bill, thanks for tuning in. You are part of my core. I really appreciate you tuning in. Love seeing you in here. Uh, we got Matt from Anytime Towing, Vermont. What's up, Jay and Ecosystem? Uh, by the way, I just named you Mant. So uh, that's Matt and Ant equals Mant. That's Matt from Anytime Towing Vermont. He's the man. I hope to hang out a few before going out in the storm. Yeah, you always do. You manage to do that. And uh, yeah, the storm is still kicking in. We got that in the industry news. 
Uh, Paul from Max Premier Transport Services here. What's up, Paul? Thanks for tuning in. You got an enclosed question? Man, Paul's the man. In fact, Brian the Car Hauler is with us. I just talked to Brian the Car Hauler on the phone. So it is true. If you send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com, I do reply to my emails. I will try to return phone calls. You can contact me through the Facebook page. You can comment below this video. I do follow up and I try and get back to everybody. In fact, I think I'm all caught up. Now I think the hot potatoes and ties court, man, Ty has a lot of people to follow up with. Oh my gosh. It's over 20 people. It's crazy. It's crazy. And that's just the people he needs. Those are the, just the new people. It's crazy, man. I'm telling you. Dude, Shaggy and the Freedom to Learn and CTS Business Coaching, we are, man, we're blowing up the freeway. What's up, Shaggy? Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it, man. And I appreciate the connections. Dude, I'm excited to see you at Maths. This is going to be awesome, man. Uh, Richard says, what's up, Sonic guy? I love your show, man. Thank you, Richard. And I don't mean mind being the Sonic guy. You know, that's kind of funny. And I, I think the last time I saw you said Sonic, I was thinking Sonic the Hedgehog, but I think he wears his hat backwards. But you weren't talking about Sonic the Hedgehog. You're talking about the guy with the milkshakes and, you know, and sitting there. I could do that. I could do that. We should definitely, we should hook that up where I'm sitting in a car, drinking a milkshake, Talking about car hauling. I could do that. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Hang on one second. Okay. All right. So, uh, Ty says, <laughs> you got, have you seen the latest video that's posted where I'm doing the fax machine noises? What do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of that fax machine noises video? Uh, Silver Mint is with us. Greetings from the winter wonderland. Yeah, man. It is crazy out there. I'm in Kansas City area, and it's been a sheet of ice. Everything is just ice. Uh, I've seen some crazy videos on Facebook about that, too. Where people just slipping on the ice. It's nuts, man. Uh, better leave Paul. No drama. Yeah, dude. Uh, oh, Leyland Lucero. Love the show. Well, thank you, Leyland. Thanks for saying hello. I really appreciate that. I appreciate you watching, and I appreciate you saying for hello. Saying for hello. For saying hello. I got all the words. I just mixed it up. Taking a J day for bad weather. That's cool, man. That's market trucking answers. Listen, if you've got trucking questions, Mark's got trucking answers. Visit Trucking Answers. It's another YouTube channel. And if you've been, uh, if you guys have been on my Facebook thread lately, I've been sharing a lot of. Um, this is where I was talking about channel building. Um, there are other car haulers with good videos. You don't have to just watch my videos. It's part of the channel idea, um, as opposed to some other people that I've been in touch with that believe in exclusion and and uh, all this legal talk and no, it's mine, you can't have it, you can't do that. I don't believe in that. I believe in inclusion. I believe in an actual ecosystem, and um, I believe in actually helping instead of excluding. So if you've got a video, if you've got good content, if you want to share it with the Auto Transport Intel Car Hauling Business channel, that's right, man. Do it. Inclusion, baby. Uh, we, let's see. Shaggy says, great. Love you, man. We have a booth. Looks great. Sounds great. Thanks, Lamont. And thank you, Shaggy. That's awesome. I can't wait to see you guys at the booth. So here's what's happening next, all right? Next, I'm going to be reaching out to companies that want to do a live interview in their booth at Maths. Since I'm officially part of the press and media at the Matt Show, we're going to start reaching out to do interviews in people's booths. So, Shaggy, maybe you can help me on this. If you guys want to do a live interview in your booth, let's schedule it. I'm going to start scheduling times out. I know there's also going to be breakout sessions. It's going to be off the hook, but I'm going to start scheduling this stuff. So, let's get doing it, dude. Uh, Justin says, thumbs up. Awesome. Thank you. By the way, if you haven't already done this and you know me, man, once I, once I get going, once I get in the chair and I got the screens and the, you know, all my props around me and the desk is all set up, you know, and I'm a freight train and I just keep talking. So I'm going to keep talking. And if you like what I'm doing, I could use a thumbs up. Remember to like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. I'm seeing the, subs the subscriber count is speeding up. And I love that, but I need the likes to keep rising in YouTube. I keep rising in YouTube, and I keep rising in Google, and then it's world domination, and then we hit the nuke button, and then it's lights out. 
Okay, great. Uh, Louis Mercado says clear. Thank you, Louis. I appreciate that. I really do. And thanks for tuning in. Thanks for saying hello. And thanks for joining the live chat. Justin Watkins is the man. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Shaggy knows a lot of people. If you haven't checked out Shaggy's Consulting and Training, do it. Go on Facebook, put in Shaggy's, just like you see it. Shaggy Consulting and Trading, Freedom to Learn. Uh, but the uh, Man, the audio sounds good, but I'm telling you, I'm still stuffed up. I'm on my second round of antibiotics. I'm telling you, man, we need to wipe this out. I need some, like, nuclear pills. He says, <laughs> I need to get on Google. Nuclear car hauling. Okay, Jay, the audio sound is good. Thank you, Jayla. I appreciate that. And I appreciate, man, I... And, you know, if everyone is to say, yeah, the sound is good, the video is great, but you're terrible, you know, I just have to deal with it. Johnston, transportation management says good sound. Thank you, Johnston. Thank you. Um, and let's see, I mentioned about Denver. Oh, you're not in Denver. Thanks a lot. Class this week. Justin K is enjoying the scenery. Javier from Washington, D.C. Thanks for the show. Well, thank you, Javier. I appreciate that. I really, I, I like making the show. Um, it is, it is work. I spend all day Tuesday working on the show and, uh, and then when I'm ready, then I start watching other shows. By the way, before this show started, it was, um, two hours prior to showtime. I'm prior to showtime. Sounds like a plug for the movie channel. Uh, it's not prior, two hours prior to me going live. I was watching, um, Kenny with trucking with authority. You guys check out that show. By the way, you got the ELD Kool-Aid, you know? Um, what was my saying about ELD Kool-Aid? I, I don't break it out as often as I used to. Love that ELD? I don't know, man. I'm hopped up on vitamin C. Uh, let's see here. Okay, what's up? Sharing is caring. Yeah, <laughs> like a fat white boy on the 4th of July. What? <laughs> okay. Uh, we got some more thumbs up, thumbs up. Santa's good, but this whole channel sucks because you can't donate more than nine and nine. <laughs> All right, I, I can live with that. You know, if that's why the channel sucks, I can live with it. Uh, oh, pool dogs in the house. Hey, Chris. By the way, I saw you had sent me an email. I was working on stuff. Um, yeah. Okay. So you've got a new video for me to share. I will check that out. Um, and I'll share it this week. Listen, if you guys have stuff you want me to share, this is a channel we are building. This is the car hauling business channel. If you don't already know this, you maybe you don't believe it. That's fine. That's fine. I can handle that. Uh, but this is the car hauling business channel. Um, there are car hauling videos. There is a lot of car hauling training. There is a lot to talk about. But I will say this. I'm building the full umbrella we are going to be bringing on, I mean, the, the interviews, I, I I don't know exactly some of the interviews that are coming my way soon, but with some of the phone calls I've been having, there's some cool stuff coming. This is going to be a big year for Auto Transport Intel. I don't even know what 2020 looks like. So this is the Car Hauling Business channel. And if you've got car hauling business to share or learn or do, bring it. Let's do this. Okay, it's 820. So, um... Yeah, and, and Pull Dog, yeah, man, you've got car hauling business to share. That that video you did about um, it's about 20, 25 minutes long, and you were talking about setting up your car hauling business. That's a good video. That's a good video, and uh, keep it coming. There's a lot of information. As you were talking about in the video, there's still so much information. It's really hard to cover it in one video. Um, and just because a video was made six months ago doesn't mean it's not time to make another video. Um, yeah, so exactly, man. Pull dog. Look, look, you're getting the likes, Chris. Yeah, good stuff, man. Okay, let's do some industry news. Let's see what we got. Uh, no, not that. Okay, so we've got, uh, truck drivers be like, I've got the hours. Okay. Uh, the look I give when the way station asks me, why doesn't your log match our computer and cameras? <laughs> that is hilarious. Uh, let's see here. Station identification. What else we got? Driver, you know you're getting fat when 
the scale master tells you to slide your seat back three notches to axle out. It's not good. It's not good. Sometimes when unexpected comes into your life out of nowhere, mark, makes your heart race and changes you forever. We call these people the DOT. All right. So what is that? How many DOT frames is that? I got, I got, I got one, two, three, four. And you know why? Oh, thanks. You know why we're talking? Oh, well, would you look at the time? You know why we're talking about uh, a lot of DOT stuff is that when you're dealing with, hey, that's a good question, Serge, what's up with your channel? Yeah, that is a good question. Hey, Charlotte Cook, hello from Pennsylvania. Pens Pensacola. It's not Pennsylvania. Dude, there's nothing in common with Pennsylvania and Pensacola right now, Jay, other than your, uh, other than your cough medicine. Um, by the way, how is this dude on the road, and what's he carrying? Are those chairs? What is that guy's load? This weird load. So how does that guy get to the scales, right? If you are a fleet company owner, fleet dispatch manager, fleet compliance officer, you work in the safety department, how do you figure? How's that guy on the road and you get a sticker wrong and they pull, they tell you to pull around back for two hours, driver? How's that make any sense? So that's why if he could do that, listen... If dude can do that, then dude can do that. Huh? Take that, Wyoming. You can't do that in Wyoming, by the way. Um, I don't know if you could do that in Wyoming. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't think so. Can you do that? Can we just call that overhang and call that a day? It's just, it's just a little overhang. So, um, yeah. Not that I need to remind you. Not that anybody needs to be rem reminded right now of the weather and what's going on. Um, there is a lot of crazy stuff going on out there. And so, on the one hand, you know, when we see, because we see, uh, we see this. Oh, yeah, well, you see that. I mean, if you see that, I, can you just call it, can you call that a sick day? So, when you see this, here, you see this stuff. This came out today, right? When you see this stuff. Where is the video capture? Let's move this. Jay, you're in the way. When you see this stuff, oh, here, let's do this. When you see these notices, you know, um, there's a reason we're seeing these notices, right? Because, because, right? We saw the picture, right? The reason for these notices is the crazy stuff on the interstate. However, many drivers argue, well, we're the safest ones on the interstate. And it's only when, you know, when there is a wreck involving a truck, like there was a really bad wreck the other night, two teenagers killed, you know, you hate to read these stories, it's awful stuff. Then, you know, they say, well, the driver shouldn't have been up there because we told the driver it's restricted, can't be there. And then you get the governor of New York out there shutting down trucks. I mean, it, it's hard to understand exactly how this needs to be handled, but... Anyway, so that's why I'm sharing it. If you see these, if you see these notices, man, it's like the ELD. It uh, it sucks, but you know, follow it because they're gonna they're gonna dr jump down your throat. You know, park it, dude. Park it. Winter Wonderland is that the Winter Wonderland silver mint? It is. Or now you just go ahead and fire it up, and then you get to the auction. Okay, now obviously, you can see, I mean, the road is clear, so he can get in. But, you know, who wants to do a car inspection in this? That's why the rates, isn't it crazy that the rates dive during this crud? Right? How is that? How is that fair? Yeah, it sucks. It does. The rates suck in December and January. Everybody talks about it, even in freight. Um... Ah, uh, Dad, you know that little yellow square button you told me not to touch? Right, just seeing water, just seeing summer is like, oh, yeah. Put my truck in the water just to get some summertime. Um, and then you could do that. That's one way to get, that's, that's not exactly, is that, uh, you don't want to do that at the scales, right? Here, let me just turn my truck back on. <laughs> Hold, one second, officer, let me just turn the truck back on. Yeah, I'd pull it around back. Yeah, okay, pull it around back. Um, so then, then you get this stuff. This lady cut me off, and to be honest, I'm kind of afraid to honk at her. <laughs> now, that's pretty funny. 
That's a funny license plate. And she's Canadian. Is it? I don't know. That was, you know, oh, no, delete this? No, I like that one. But here's why I share that, because you heard this news story. This thing's been all over Facebook. Now, we all know that, and this is where we talk about restrictions on the interstate, under dangerous conditions, who drives the worst? Huh? Is it the four-wheelers? You know, or the trucks? It's, well, here, here's your... Here's the proof in the pudding. And you've seen some of these videos of these trucks like sliding out and just trying to stop on a dime so they don't run into the... It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Um, okay. So uh, this was a segue. I admit this might be in the wrong place. Check this out. I got I got this delivered, okay? I got this, cool, this cooling fan for my laptop delivered. It's a higher speed laptop. Nate said, get a cooling fan, so I got one. I went on Amazon, got this cooling fan. That's a picture. I got this picture on my phone when it got delivered to the door. So, uh, can we get that in car hauling? Is Has anybody done this? So, am I the first one to think of this idea for car hauling software? How about a picture of the car delivered to your location? Has anybody done this? I don't think so. I don't think so. Not that I've heard of. You heard it here first on Auto Transport Intel. All right. New parking bays being trialed for people who are offended by everything. So there's your snowflake parking. That's <laughs> snowflake parking. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Oh, this is good. We're a shipping warehouse, not match.com. Our clerk is not looking for a relationship. Please keep talk and conversation brief and professional. <laughs> so, and if you don't like it, you know where your parking spot is? Right out front. Okay. Um, when you need that one perfect bolt, got a whole bucket of bolts. Don't you hate that? Let's see here. Oh, the good old days. That is pretty intense. I, you know, I don't, I didn't know about this. Man, look at, they got those cars stacked in there. Look at that. Hanging like meat. I hear they hang Copart in like meat. The salvage cars and the freight containers. But that's pretty interesting, isn't it? You do that today. Called the Metrogistics. Yeah, listen, um, I just loaded it. <laughs> I just loaded it bumper down. Yeah, the uh, the license plate's straight up in the air right now. Good to go. And picture. Okay. Let's see here. Origin destination. Florida to Connecticut, 115 bucks. And it's a Pacifica. Book it. That is crazy. So, actually, this is a slide. I just took this. Uh, Trucking with Authority. He was live a couple hours ago. And I wanted to share that uh, if you watch Trucking with Authority and Freight Waves, and, and, and in fact, Kenny was talking about Freight Waves, they talk about trucking trends, pricing. You can learn a lot. I'll tell you, yes, there's some major differences between freight and car hauling, but there are a lot of similarities, too. Um, and even within the similarities, you'll find major differences. But when you look at rates, spot rates, uh, where to look on the heat map of where you're going to make better money, less money. There's just, there's a lot of similarities. So if you want to stay really educated, you got to reach out, go, you know, get your information, other locations, but this is your home. All right. This is your home. Auto transport Intel car hauling business channel is your home, but you know, sail around the saloon and visit the other ports and then come back home. Okay. Uh, speaking of, um, okay, Central Dispatch. Now, Ty pointed out that I think I must talk about Central every show, so let's do it now. Now, Ty found this flyer at a manhunt, and it's interesting because as far as us in the car hauling and dispatch side of things, and if, if, if you're listening at Central Dispatch, out there in Central Dispatch land, uh, I want to I want to let you know that this is... This is interesting information because in car hauling, car hauling and dispatching, 
okay, on that side of the fence, we feel neglected. Whereas in the dealer world, you're not neglected. The dealer world and the auction world, you get marketing, you get updated information. And by the way, <laughs> you get you get better rates too. Okay. Now 60 bucks for two posts a month. Okay, that's not that's not that great of a rate. But gosh, it feels like I'm just saying, this is not this isn't just my opinion. This is a a well-shared opinion that in car hauling and dispatching, we feel neglected by you Central Dispatch. And in the dealer auction selling world, it you don't seem neglected. So what's going on? By the way, since now you own Ready Logistics, and now I'm talking to Cox. In fact, I think I've been talking to Cox the whole time, and I've been saying Central Dispatch. Because, actually, nobody knows who you really are anymore. Except we read about Cox everywhere. I mean, Mannheim, dealers, software apps, Ride Clean, Dealer Track, J Tracker. I mean, it's nonstop. Dun, 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 dun. It's everywhere. And, and there's no updates to the load board. Nothing. Like, what is going on exactly? I mean, I, I tell you what, as I follow in the news, I, I think I know what's going on. And, and maybe, maybe Central Dispatch doesn't care if other p people come in and update load boards and update the car hauling software. Because, I know there's a lot of people working on it, so I'm not sure what's going on. But the problem is the ATM keeps cranking in the carrier millions, so then I guess whoever creates the best solution, you just buy it. Is that how this works? Because now that you own Ready Logistics, you have a mobile app. Why not add it to Central Dispatch Load Board? Why not fuse the two? Why not make it easier? Because here's the problem. The car haulers and the dispatchers, they're on your load board. They don't really like it. Again, I mean, everybody says it. All you got to do is Google Central Dispatch Reviews, and everybody says the same thing. They don't really like it, but it's the number one load board. And, in fact, it's featured in my top five car hauling load boards video. Give that a thumbs up. But uh, people don't really like it. It is the number one load board. Everybody wants to topple it. But you have a mobile app at least allow car haulers and dispatchers a place to send their dispatch sheet because you guys do know that all the car hauling software dispatch dashboards and mobile apps are creating chrome extensions to import your dispatch sheets you guys do know that right like it's not one it's not two it's not even three it's like so many car hauling software tms systems out there and there isn't just one major car hauling software TMS system. Don't be fooled. There are several now. So, I mean, I don't know what's going on, but anyways, I just want to say that I see this kind of marketing and I wonder, where's the car hauler love? Because the dealers get love, right? Okay. All right. So speaking of car hauler love, listen, Sun Country Trailers is giving out the car hauler love. And if you have a question, you want to talk to Sun Country, there's a name there's a phone number. Give them a call. And I'll tell you what, call them up, contact them, say, hey, man, you guys got to come on Auto Transport Intel. We got to get an interview. We want to bring in a live panel discussion. We got a lot to talk about. We got business to do. We got recommendations. We got a lot of new car haulers coming in, too, by the way. So if you're a service provider and you want to meet new car haulers, you have a home. We all have a home now. It's Auto Transport Intel. And that is John Griffo's parking spot, so don't park there. Okay, let's do this. We finished industry news, which was very exciting. By the way, here's the question of the day. Where is my question of the day? Um, I actually wrote it down. Okay, here we go. Question of the day, and this is cool. This, this kind of leads into what I was just talking about. What is your favorite fleet management software? All right. If you're a fleet owner, if you work at a fleet, if you manage several trucks, you work in dispatch, you work in accounting, you're an owner, you work in sales, you manage customers, 
you have a CRM, whatever it is, what's your favorite fleet management software? You can tell me in the chat. You can put it in the comments below. I won't be embarrassed by whatever name you say. Because as we move into the freedom of speech summer for auto, auto transport intel, we're going to put all the names on the table. All right. I know it's it's been a little bit dicey and I don't have a whole lot of more time to wait. But go ahead and tell me who is your favorite fleet management software. All right. If you dare. Okay. What else we got? Oh, yeah. Let's go back into the... Uh, you know what's cool is sometimes I miss some of the live chat when I'm doing the industry news. We're going to go back into the live chat for a minute, and then we're going to move into our first interview. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? Okay. Plowing and cleaning up wrecks. Oh, Matt is up in Vermont. He's plowing and cleaning up wrecks, trying to catch some intel. Seems like it snows every Tuesday. It does seem like it snows every Tuesday. Well, that's because... <laughs> that's because... Um, yeah, why is it? Why does it snow every Tuesday? Uh, ELD Kool-Aid, yeah. Um, love that ELD. I think that's what I said. Love that ELD. It's funny, if I if I don't if I don't say one of my sayings for a while, I forget what it is and I create a new saying. By the way, did you guys see the new uh I got my action figure up here because I got a target on my back. So that's my um that's my freedom of speech action figure. Yeah, he's a new addition to my set. Um, let's see here. What else we got? I see your videos. Oh, the, oh, right. Charlotte from Pensacola, Jay. Pensacola. Shaggy, don't be late for class tomorrow. Hey, Justin. Oh, Gwen has a message for Shaggy and Justin in the live chat. So there you go. All right, Gwen. Well, awesome. Thanks for joining the show. That's really cool. Bad Apple's kind of losing interest. Not sure if I want to be known as a car hauler in the future. Kind of feel like disappearing and being more low-key. Don't feel like I'm I'm so cool anymore. Okay, well, listen, Serge. Here's the thing, man. Um, and I'll tell you what. I want to say this, man. I enjoyed doing the live uh, show from Massachusetts. I thought it was fun. I thought it was interesting. Um and, you know, I don't know if it if that show was for everybody, but it did do pretty well. Um, so I think that doing car hauling events is an important part of the future. Uh, and if you want to host an event and if you want to, you know, if you want to be a part of the event or if you want to be just on the outside of the event, whatever it is, um, you know, I think that. As part of this ecosystem, and I'll tell you what, this I'll say this. I told somebody this, this on your behalf, Serge, is that, you know, we're not all easily understood all the time. People are complicated. We're complex. We're multidimensional. To think that each other is one-dimensional, easily contained, and, you know, we can put each other in a little box and tie it with a bow. It's not so easily done. We're human beings. So, Serge, you're a human being, too. You already know that. I'm telling you, man, whatever you choose to do, I'm cool with that. But, um, I, you know, I appreciate I appreciate the videos you've made. I appreciate the contribution you've made to car hauling. And just keep us posted. All right? Um, Bill Nicholas here, working and watching. Awesome. You're still working, Bill? Come on, man. Dude, it's late, but I get it. I know. I, there's been times, as a dispatcher, there have been times where I was still making calls for car haulers around this time of night, and I still had to do the spreadsheet, update the spreadsheet with the loads. And the, the problem, here's the problem. If you're a dispatcher and you're making verification phone calls right now, that's a problem because people aren't going to be there. And yeah, so, hey, Jay, get crazy, get and crazy pictures. Yeah, man. Great. Oh, great. I said get. I'm telling you. My eyesight's fuzzy. I'm losing my mind. Okay, that sucks, man. There's always ups and downs in life. If you're not having fun, it's true, man. If you're not having fun, it's time to take a break. Sometimes get a little perspective. Honestly, um, coaching, mentoring can help with that. But if you don't need a mentor or coach, maybe you need a vacation or meditation. Try something different. Audiobooks. 
Hey, what's up, Truck in America? Awesome. Just shared another video from Truck in America. Um, Truck in America, he drives a 53-foot uh, dry van. He's a freight hauler. But again, this is a business channel. Confirmation is everything. Shaggy, do you have a website? Silverman says, as many cars are shipped daily, I'm surprised there isn't higher tech used for pickup and delivery. Amen, Silverman, and it's coming. I'll tell you what, there's some cool things coming. I, I think it's, this, speaking of bad apples, this bad apple cart is about to be overturned. Yeah, we're, we're about to see. But I guess, again, if you've got that, if you've got those multi-millions just stacked up in the bank, why not just sit back, wait to see who does all the work, and then just buy them, dude. Just yeah, just here's your bag of gold. Goodbye. I don't know. I don't know if that's what's going to happen or not. Uh, let's see. I've never read it, but you're like the third person to mention that book. Think I might have to read it. Yeah, man, dude. GeoTab Fleet Management Software. That's right. We're going to be talking about GeoTab. Michael's going to be with us really soon. So stick around for uh, Geo. Listen, do you guys know about GeoTab? You're going to learn about it tonight. Uh, let's see. Maybe I got too plugged in last few years. I feel like we need to meet face to face more living in a truck truck makes you kind of unsociable zombie. So that's my take. Let's meet face to face. more often. Well, we should, we're going to be doing more car hauling meetups and, um, Matt's is another opportunity for that. So you guys know about Matt's mid America truck show. Let's just plug it right now. Listen, mid America truck show. Let me, uh, let's go ahead and move. Let's see. Oh, there's me. <laughs> that's me. Uh, that's me in the video with my tray. Um, when I'm talking about, you know, uh, eating off the buffet, the uh, load board buffet. So listen, if you if you haven't done it already, go to truckingshow.com. That's right. Truckingshow.com, right? Truckingshow.com. And you can become an attendee or an exhibitor or you just register. Okay, you click that yellow register button. All right, go up there, click the yellow register button. Free attendance. It's free. They have a, it's a multi-day show, March 28th through the 30th. Man, I mean, it's insane. The size of this place and the amount of exhibitors. I mean, it's it's off the hook. So you got to go to the show. We're going to be at the show. We're going to be live. Shaggy's got a booth. Many people are going. And this is in Louisville. All right. So, man, you got to go register. Go do that. Okay, what else we got here? Let's do a couple more, and then we're going to go to uh, our interview. Transport doesn't sleep. It's true, isn't it? Uh, Javier says he's working on it. If you need anything, call me. Hey, Wild Bill. Hey, what's up? Hey, good evening. A.K.A. Limo Joe Trucking and Car Hauling is with us. That's awesome. That's cool, man. Thanks for tuning into the show. I really do appreciate it. Um, and can you tell that I'm still, I'm still a little stuffed up, you know, it's a bummer. I, you know, I'm trying to get over this. I'm, I eat vitamin C all day. I'm drinking tea. Hang, hang on one second for me. Here, let's do this. Okay. There we go, brother. So I just go ahead and sniff real good. I got a, whoo. Oh, man. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to run an ad. Okay, the audio's good. Everything's okay. We're all still good. Everybody's with us. All right. Um, and uh, here we're going to run an ad, and then I'm going to bring in Michael Cook. So let's roll this thing, and I'll be back in a minute. We'll be back with Michael. All right. Hey, guys. Jay at Auto Transport Intel here. Listen, you know that if you're a new car hauler, you're looking for insurance. You've got your equipment, it's time to get insurance so that you can begin the process of getting towards hauling cars. So where do you go? What do you do? When you need insurance, who can you talk to? Well, head on over to Pelican Trucking Insurance and you want to talk to Sam. Now, Sam is a friend of the show and again, it's PelicanTruckingIns.com, Pelican Trucking Insurance. Go to the webpage, scroll down you'll find the phone number. There's a phone number, 225-308-9882. You can talk to Sam Farr. Now it's sfarr at lemoineinsurance.com, but he is with Pelican Trucking Insurance and he wants to answer your questions. He wants to talk to new car haulers. He wants to talk to established car haulers too that are looking for a better rate. 
If you're unhappy with your insurance rate or you don't have a quote yet and you need a new insurance quote, head on over to Pelican Trucking Insurance, pelicantruckingins.com. Ask for Sam Farr. You can send him an email, put in a phone call. And again, you're looking for an insurance agent you can get on the phone, you can talk to, you can get advice from. What kind of a deductible do you need? How much insurance do you need per vehicle? What about automotive liability insurance? It's your liability and your cargo. That's what you need. So you can get on the road hauling cars, get set up with the brokers on the load boards, or if you're talking to a dealership direct, they're going to ask about your insurance. So go ahead and talk to Pelican Trucking Insurance. Ask for Sam. I know he wants to talk to you. Again, here's his phone number. I'm going to scroll down on the page, pelicantruckingins.com. Call Sam. 225-308-9882. Send them an email, sfar at lemoineinsurance.com. You can also find him on Facebook and Instagram, and he's waiting for your call. I'm Jay at Auto Transport Intel, and I approve this message. All right, cool. So uh, Sam is going to be with us soon, um, but for now, let me go ahead and switch this camera over. Let's do that. Uh, let's do that. Let's do this. And then let's see here. Let's do this. Okay, no, not that. Hang on one second. I do. Somebody made the comment that I need like a multi-screen. Uh, I do need a multi-screen. Let's see here. Um... Okay, here, no, you know what, hang on one second, Michael, you know what, I changed the setting, and I'm going to read, hang on one second, Michael, I changed the setting, and I need to, oh, that's interesting, okay, so hang, bear with me, I made a setting change on this laptop, so I need to end this meeting, Michael, I'm going to re-invite you, hang on one second, this stuff is, um, you know, it's frustrating how, when you, yeah, see, I did, oh, I used dual monitors. Okay, so un, let's check that. Now let's do a new meeting. Now let's do, okay, join with computer audio. Now let's re-invite Michael. And, um, man, technical stuff, dude, technical. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, so, yeah, when I get, I will be excited. If I ever do get, okay, so that's, that screen looks crazy. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do that. Okay, now I've got this. Zoom interview. Okay, Michael should be with us any second. All right, so we should be good to go there. And I think you guys can still see me and hear me. There's Mike. All right, cool. Thank you, man. Thanks for rejoining me. Um, Michael, can you see me and hear me okay? I can. Can you hear me? I can. Yes. All right. All right. How's the audio? The audio is good. Uh, it's a touch artifacty. Little bit of dropout. All right. Let me uh, give That's... me two seconds and see if I can fix that. A little that better. A little better now. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm in a better internet connection than uh, last time we spoke. So. Awesome. Work out. Awesome. Well, listen, man, I want to thank you for uh, being patient, waiting and joining the show and being here tonight. And you've, I mean, I've got you for like two hours or something crazy. Yeah, man. Ready to do it. Awesome. So, all right. So your name is Michael Cook. You are with Fleet Shield. Will you tell us more about who you are or what you're doing? Yeah, normally uh, um, I go by uh, Michael Cook, the one and only. Right. Uh That'd be my, I guess, my, my call name for the show. How about that? I like it. Uh, but yeah, I'm from, <laughs> I'm from Pensacola, Florida. That's uh, Charlotte. You saw who joined. That's my mom. Mm. Uh, so she, I told her about it, and she wanted to jump on and, uh, and watch. But yeah, born and raised in uh, Pensacola, Florida. Uh, part of the story is I worked for Sprint for 10 years. Uh, went out to Houston. Uh Met Justin Watkins, who I saw was commenting on a couple different things. Uh, we worked at Sprint together for a number of years, and um, 
actually sold the electronic logs with them and other fleet management software. Okay. And um, just, uh, you know, I guess kind of your good old American story. We, we said, well, heck, you know, let's, uh, let's go out and do it on our own. So we, uh, we branched off, started our own company a few years back and uh, just have had a blast working with the trucking industry and, and um, like to, you know, hopefully we'll have some time to just share why we chose the trucking industry and some of the things we're really passionate about. But um, yeah, I mean, we just, you know, working for a big company, we learned a lot of stuff and just saw, you know, how things were done right and some things that weren't done right. We just tried to fix it and, and um, you know, uh, still working at it every day, but it's worked out pretty well so far. And right now, so you said you're based out of Houston now, is that right? We are, yeah, based out of Houston. Okay, awesome. All right, so, yeah. and that's interesting. So you, you must have learned a lot, right, working at Sprint, right? Mm -hmm. It's interesting how that works out is that we work for a company, we learn things. But what's interesting is when we're at a company and we're learning, much of the learning happens from our own drive to learn more, mm -hmm. not because the yeah. company wants us to learn more. Did you find that? No, I'm also, I think I lost you for a second. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, yeah. and one thing we learned at working for a big company is do what? No, I just you cut out for a sec. Another cut okay. out, but it's okay. Just okay. Yeah, <laughs> keep going. Keep going. All right. Yeah, no, we, um, yeah, we learned a lot of great stuff uh, just really about um, how to, successfully run an organization and from a, a processes perspective and things like that. But, you know, when you run such a big company, sometimes a lot of the folks that are up at the top, they don't always really understand uh, what all goes into or needs to go into the customer experience. And, you know, uh, just for those of you that don't know, you know, Sprint doesn't do just phones and things of that nature. They, they sell anything that has cellular connectivity, a business sales rep can really sell it. So, that's kind of how we were introduced to the ELDs. And, um, you know, as we, um, it, Justin and I really took an interest in it and, uh, you know, we started figuring out, man, this thing isn't like, cell, you know, slinging cell phones. Uh, you really got to understand um, from a compliance perspective, all the laws and things of that nature. Oh, and so, um, you know, I started digging and trying to find, well, who does Sprint go to, to learn from all this stuff? And everybody I talked to just had no idea what I was even talking about. What do you mean learn about the laws and, you know, this, <laughs> that, and the other. So, yeah. So it was, uh, it was really funny because we went pretty high up and, uh, you know, and I'm sure that they do have their own, uh, people, but the, um, we actually had one of our, our customers in, in Houston, uh, at the time, uh, it was WW Roland and uh, big intermodal trucking outfit, in Houston. And we said, well, who do you guys go to when you have compliance questions? And they said, well, you got to talk with Tom Hartman. Right. And Tom, um, you know, honestly was, uh, was just God sent one of the coolest guys, uh, you'll, you'll meet in Texas. I mean, just what you would picture a, a cowboy, which you, you know, a DT officer, with the cowboy hat and kind of walks like this. And, you know, as the draw and used to play baseball and rodeo and all that stuff. And just, uh, you know, he, he was at, and, and I hope if he watches this, I hope I get this right, but um, he was at one point, I believe he was the sergeant over all the different DOT officers in Texas, training him, training all the DOT guys on all the different laws and whatnot. And wow. uh, anyways, we met him and uh, just really was exactly what we were looking for because, you know, when you go in and you have a, a conversation about ELDs and you want to not just talk about things like pricing and talk about, you know, features, but really understanding how the truck drivers are going to use it day to day. And more importantly, how that's going to affect them at a roadside inspection or during an audit, you know, learning really what the enforcement is looking at that really, I think set us apart. There was a couple of things that happened that I don't really um, um, uh, want to get into right now, but you know, there, it, everything really just happened the way it was supposed to. And we, uh, we branched off and, um, and started fleet shield. And, um, you know, the, our main purpose was, is not, you know, it's, it's primarily ELDs what we do. And, and I'm sure we'll get into it tonight, but the cool thing about uh, what we really enjoy and what we're really passionate about is fleet shield is the product that, the only product on the market today that we felt was going to answer the question is what 
after we all have the ELDs, they're in our trucks, it's not going away, what else are we gonna be able to do with it? And it really gives the trucking companies, especially the smaller guys, the tools to be able to compete with the big boys, right? And that's um, us being kind of underdogs and branching off on our own. Um, really, that that's our passion. That's kind of our niche. We, you know, we, we our customer base ranges anywhere from right at about 800 trucks um, all the way down to one truck. We got a lot of one mm. truck customers. And wow. one of the things that um, Sprint um, and cut me off, Jay, by the way. No, um, if you, keep going. If, Love uh, it. If you want. But, um you know, the, one of the things, you know, working for a big company and especially if you're in sales, it's, Hey, sell it, move on to the next. You're a hero one month, a zero the next, uh, make the promises, get the customer sold. And then, but now your job is to move on. That customer is then passed on to another person who has nothing invested in the sale and in the customer. They weren't there looking them in the eye saying, you know, hey, this is going to do this. We're going to do this. They might tell that person, but they they're they're not invested in this customer like you are. So, you know, the the way that we've really uh, structured our our company is to be able to provide as much hands on support and set things up from the beginning, just like as we got started and we were setting up QuickBooks and all this, that, and the other. You know, we it was uncharted territory and and. And we actually left our accounting system. We left it, not because the software wasn't good, but we just couldn't get the support that we needed. We couldn't get somebody to, to kind of just maybe spend those extra few minutes with us to make sure it's set up, it was set up right. And so, um, you know, if, if there's anything that I think anybody can take away with this outside of the features of Geotab itself, it's just we, we really pride ourselves on taking time with, with everybody to make sure it's set up right. Because once it's set up right from the beginning, there's very, really little, very, very little that you have to do uh, after that. It's, I mean, the point of the logging device is really to automate as much as possible and remove as much error um, as uh, as there isn't any risk that could come along with with human error. So, you know, if we set it up right from the beginning, um, we're proud to uh, to have uh, in such a short period of time brought on as many trucks as we have and, and have lost as as few as we have, and that's something that we're really, really, really proud of and grateful for. Awesome. So now I'm going to jump in. Let me ask you this. Awesome. Thank you for that introduction. I ran, I ran, I went to your website, ran the video while you were talking so the audience could see that. Yeah. And get to know Absolutely. more about Fleet Shield. So, so let's say I am a, you know, um, I'm an owner operator car hauler. I'm adding trucks. I'm growing. That's what most, most owner operators, that's their dream is to grow, add more trucks. Now they become a small fleet. Okay. They've got four, three, four trucks. Fine. Okay. They got to start ramping it up. And for uh, compliance, really compliance, this is where I want you to finish the sentence. As they begin to ramp up, what begins to happen to management and issues and concerns? Right. So, well, number one, um, I, you know, and I hate to use the word automate or autonomous, you know, when talking to anybody in the, in the trucking sure. industry, but I, I, you know, the, the fact of the matter is, is, is that technology is heading away in every industry and there's nothing that any of us can do to stop it. So, uh, you know, from an techno, from a technology standpoint, if you can automate all the business processes that you have right now, which is very easy to do. And that's what I'm really happy to, to, to talk tonight about is because most folks think, Oh gosh, it's going to cost me a fortune to set up this and that and the other. And it, um, you know, Geotab, the genius of Geotab, and if, if I mean, I, I don't imagine anybody's as nerdy as I am uh, when looking into this th uh, stuff, but the, the founders of Geotab were a lot like Elon Musk in the sense that uh, both originated from South Africa, traveled to Canada, um, and what they did was they set up this open platform that uh, allowed for other technologies to integrate very easily. They said, well, we want to be good at one thing. We don't want to be... The, um, you know, it, we, we can't be the best at everything. So we're going to be really good at what we do, but we're also going to make it very available for other people to come in and integrate. And so, you know, when you buy Geotab, um, and, and which by the way, Geotab, they're, they're so, um, they're, I don't know really how to explain it other than the fact that they don't sell anything. I got a question. Uh, they, they, they provide support. Yeah. All right, so what is Geotab? Tell okay, me. Okay, I'm sorry. Tell, yeah, thank yeah, you. 
What is GeoTab? So GeoTab was what we were exposed to at Rent. Um, uh, that was the ELD platform. But GeoTab, um, they are a software and hardware engineering firm. So they build all their own devices. Uh, we've been up and toured their facility in Toronto. Um, they, uh, everything is done in house, uh, the, for even all the way down to a support level, everything's done in house, but they do not sell anything. It's a complete resale. Oh, wow. So, they don't yeah, have so, their own sales force, but they, do they do fulfillment? Yes. Yeah, so, so, well, and you know, so basically what we do is we buy their products and services at, at wholesale and then we resell them. But from an account management standpoint, we are the front line. Um, I'll talk a little bit about our support model where we do utilize Ge GeoTab support model. But um, all in all, you know, they, uh, they do what they do best, and that's make software, and they make it good. It is the most secure ELD platform, um, as open as it is for others to integrate with. Um, it, is, it is extremely secure. They just secured a DOD contract. Um, I think last quarter, um, or maybe something. early even early this Department quarter. Yeah. Of so defense, they, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's, and that's tracking their stuff. So um, you probably, a lot of folks, they, they, they might know people with geotab, but they might not know it because it is a complete reseller model from guys like us. You know, they're not advertising every, all over the place. Like you see Fleetmatics and Omnitrax and, you know, and things like that. It is, I mean, they really just sell us the stuff and support it, you know, and it, and it's really our job to go out and find the customers, make sure it's the right fit and manage the, those accounts after the sale. I love it because it didn't like working for Sprint. They stay out of our hair, right? Um, they, um, but, but yet the, one of the coolest things is, man, that I felt like working for a big company they never did is they listen. Uh, we've had several customers come to them with, uh, different, very specific custom reports that they wanted to see that that GeoTab didn't offer out of the box, and they built it for them. So, wow. um, yeah, I mean, I mean, it, awesome. all the way up to, I mean, we had a VP of uh, North American Operations get on a call with one of our customers just to hear why that report was important. Because if it was important to this type of company, uh, this type of customer, it could it could very easily be important. I just was like, man, they get it. They're just doing it right. So it sounds um, like the kind are, of company. It sounds to me like the kind of company that it's exciting to resell, right? You're, oh, it's super exciting, man! Yeah. When we went up there to in June to, uh, to GeoTab Connect, I felt like I was at an Apple event, and and Steve Jobs was there awesome. releasing, Woo! you know, the new iPhone, whatever, man. Yeah. Everybody was pumped up and motivated, and they just they did it right. They're they're the only telematics. Um, which, by the way, it's it, it, telematics is kind of sending uh, information um, cellular service, right? So some right. of y'all might be familiar with the term IoT, and that's machine to machine communicating. So like your red box that's uh, connected and sending all information wirelessly. Um, that that's a, a you know a form of uh, machine to machine, and that's what ours is doing, right? It's the machine that's plugged into the truck. And it's being commu is communicated with another machine to the to the GeoTab servers over the the cellular network. So right, telematics, it, uh, telematics. I just went to Wikipedia, which we know is the authority on information and truth. That's a joke. Uh, I love Wikipedia, <laughs> and <laughs> I love Wikipedia. And and telematics. Not everybody pass. Everybody <laughs> passed college with it though. <laughs> hey, exactly. Oh my gosh. Oh, we had. An, I was working from encyclopedias, so. Um, but it, but telematics <laughs> is the technology of sending, receiving, and storing information used in telecommunication devices. So we know that you're using telematics to send uh, information from your ELD to the officer if you're sending it wirelessly. Right. right. That's right. that's telematics. Telematics, exactly. So, so, so when he says, get out of the truck, I need your telematics yeah exactly yeah. yeah that's what they're talking about and okay. it uh, they're they're the largest telematics uh company in the world in respect to um a uh, number of places that they're in they're actually the only one in all seven continents so even wow. down in antarctica they're uh geotabs tracking um uh things down there they are at the forefront of the uh smart cities from a telematics perspective 
I believe it's in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, you can go to, and I don't, you don't necessarily have to go to it right now, but uh, I think it's um, data.geotab.com. And it's all about big data, which by the way, I just want to kind of say, first off, they're not disclosing any um, company information when they talk about big data. It's data points. So it is a truck located here. Stop at this stoplight. It is not ABC Trucking's truck is stop, stocked here. The information they gather is anonymous. But what they're, um, what they're trying to do is provide that information um, in a way that we can of course, you know, reduce uh, vehicle ac accidents and risk, um, decrease uh, traffic congestion and things of that nature. But that is um, that is where everything is going. Everything that you see, um, you know, uh, right now, just in the news, when not necessarily with automation, but when, when you hear the term big data, that's just basically taking all the data that all these computers and all these different things is collecting, providing the statistics to put into the algorithms to be able to work out problems that supposedly make our, our lives easier. But we, we won't even go down that road. So I want to say this is that, Ryan, I know what you're saying when you talk about big data. Big data, unfortunately, has, has one of the same words as big brother. And, you know, we get right. Right, you're right, <laughs> and we get a, right. So it should be called like 1984 data. No, don't call it that. So what, <laughs> what, what what I'm getting at is the point of fleet management software and yeah. this big data and telematics, et cetera, is that when you're managing a fleet of trucks, you're no longer thinking about what cars am I picking up today? You're thinking about what trucks need maintenance, what guys mm -hmm. are running out of hours, you know, is everybody in their safety compliance you know, is everybody up to their safety compliance, right? It's a whole new level of concern and worry, and you need software to help you automate the management of this day-to-day -day operation. Am I right? Exactly. So what what Geotab does best is they take the data that we're already gathering, and in, in, the, in this particular industry's case, mandatorily already gathering, and providing you more tools to do um, more with your business. And if it's okay with you, I'd like to just kind of share my screen for just a second awesome. to kind of, um, uh, uh, help everybody visualize. Let's see, I've got to wait for you. Let's see if it'll. So try now. Okay. There we go. Got it now. All right. So, and this is where I'm, uh, if it's okay with you, I don't know. Um, is there right to have the audience go ahead and if I ask them a couple of questions and see if they respond. Love it. Love it. Okay. So, you know, if y'all have any questions or you see something that piques your interest, if you want to tell us who you have already, that's fine. If not, you don't. But I mean, tell us, does your software do this or does it not do this? I'm interested to know. I, I, awesome. I like to think I know a lot about our competition, but um, I don't know everything. So I'm, I'm really interested. Um one of the I always love when we go into a customer's office and we uh, we sit down with them. I always like to show them this first. And some of y'all may use this. You might not use it. Doesn't matter. But this is going to show you how powerful our solution is. And you'll see right there. You can see the truck moving on the map. That's real time. It's about three seconds behind. But uh, that's because we're pinging it every second. Uh, that's it's coming back uh, to our servers and we're and then they have algorithm that kind of animates the the truck going down the road uh, you don't really ever notice anything different um, unless they're taking a turn it might take a second for it to catch up but that's uh, that's pretty pretty powerful so um, when we talk about some of the other things that's how we're doing it is we're just pulling more data than everybody else so that's awesome. Um, yeah, I want to, uh, just as we kind of go through here, okay, this is fun. I was um, with a customer one time, and he, and he says, whoa, 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 what's that triangle right there? See, so I knew something was wrong with it. What's going on? What is this? <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's us telling you that his check engine light's on. And uh, so, Hardcore. you know, that's all well and good. Yeah. Well, that's totally good, but I mean, what good does that do? I mean, Lord, I know my check engine light's on. It's sitting right there, you know, in front of me. But, like, you know, for all of Hey, hey, Carlos. Yeah, your check <laughs> engine light's on. 
<laughs> okay. All right. Carry on, buddy. All right. See ya. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. So uh, I'm going to come right over here and we're going to eliminate that phone call by seeing exactly what it is. Let's just come right down here to this one. Uh, it could be any number of things. We're not just going to give you the code, but we're also going to translate the code for you. Right. So I, um, I've got one plugged up in my truck. I've got a Jeep, right? Check engine light comes on. I come in here and I look at it and it was something with the uh, catalytic converter. Right. So I call Jeep. Uh, Jeep says, look, you know, I told him, I said, Hey, I got something wrong with my truck. I need to bring it in. And they said, okay. I said, well, how much is it going to cost me? And they're going to be like, well, it's 125 bucks for us to hook it up. And I said, well, no, ma'am, you don't have to do that. I can already tell you it's this code and it's this. Well, it's still going to be 125 bucks for us to, you know, we've got to tell. And I'm like, well, man, I'm telling you what it is. I can give you the code, you know, <laughs> well, it's still going to be 125 bucks. So, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Yeah, needless to say, I didn't go there. You know, I just, I looked it up and found out it wasn't any big deal. And a lot of Jeeps do it. So, um, but, you know, it is extremely valuable, especially if, and, and once again, we're not talking about from a, a really large fleet perspective. Sure, it's nice for everybody, but for you to, for your check engine light to come on and you'd be able to pull up your phone and see what it is and you determine, okay, is this an issue or is this not an issue? Do I need to worry about it? Do I need to take time out of my day? What is my time worth? And then turn around and, and either stop, pull over. If you've got something to hook it up, have to do all that. No, we're already plugged into the ECM. Why not provide you this type of data, right? So, wow. um, and we'll talk um, a little bit more about what else we can do uh, with that uh, a little bit later on. But, you know, that's uh, super important. And, and so I, I love that we're jumping in. I'm sorry. Yeah, I love it too. As a, so I want to ask you, as a user, I get mm -hmm. this dashboard. I can do all this. I can call my drivers and tell them their check engine lights on and right. Like I get to see this. That's right. Wow. Yeah. So if you, if, what we'll do is we'll even set this up like on your dashboard. One of the things that we like to do when you have too much information, Sometimes it's just as useless as no information, right? So we'll try sure. and customize this for you to the things that are important. If you have that package, we'll try and put that on there up here at the top so you can see it. We can send an alert to you, um, you know, talking about automation. We're not automating the entire business. We're just automating bits and pieces. But they, um, the most um, uh, important thing, I think, when, when talking about, you know, um, you know, the ELD is, Look, if you have an ELD and it's working, it's registered with the FMCSA or self-certified is what it is. I don't know if y'all knew that, but it was a self-certification process. I'm sure, Jay, y'all probably talked about it before. But the you know self-certification, um, everybody should do the ELD about the same way. The main difference you're going to see is the user interface. What does it look like when you're in the truck? Biggest question is, what else can it do? You're already plugged in there. Am I getting my money's worth? Are, are you using, are you paying 20, 25, $30 a month? And are you just getting the ELD and, or right. are you getting all the things that you could be getting just right. because we're, because right. we know that there are, we, there are ELDs. I can't, I got to tell you this. I, I, my mind is blown that there are still people pushing like, ELDs, it, there are already 200 ELDs and you're pushing 201. I, I can't understand why you would even bother. Because if you right. are, if you're like right, the, the legal uh, understanding, all the legal navig navig uh, ramifications and navigations, and then all the support that's going to be required, plus to compete with all of the possible options, well, I don't understand why you would even bother. But I mean, this well, is this yeah. Is and it's, a lot of people jumped in late, you know, and a lot of folks went with your Omni tracks, your people net, your, um, uh, you know, your big names because you feel secure behind a big name, you know, and it's, that's what I've heard. And that's my buddy had this and this, that, and the other. And, and, um, that's why I love doing this stuff because yeah. if you don't know what's out there, wow. then, uh, then uh, you won't. And I, and I'll, I'll take it a step further and just say that, you know, from a, uh, there's a, there are a lot of ELD companies. Everybody does every, something well, right? Everybody yeah. does something that they do well, um, except for Geotab. They do everything well, right? So it's, um, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, and I mean, but they, this level of dashboard is awesome. I've read about these things, and I know, yeah, tr you know this. There are uh, some other companies. There's maybe a handful of companies that have this level, but I can tell with your passion and the, and, and what you're showing us that, I mean, I want, th this is the level of support and service I want as a customer. Well, and we'll put it this way. They all like, okay. You come in, everybody's done a demo, right? And the guy comes in and he says, well, we're going to be able to show you uh, your harsh braking and your your speeding and your uh, harsh cornering. And, you know, number one, the larger fleet, the safety person's like, whoa, now you're giving me more stuff to be in totally. charge of, right? Oh, my gosh. So yeah. not as much data as they're providing. What you're breaking, I love you're about breaking you sucks. Your turning yeah. sucks. Slow down. <laughs> Now I got to hire somebody just to call them and Crazy. tell them what they're doing. They already know what they're doing, but yeah, now, now it's the big brother effect, right? Like yeah. I see you with your out, without your seatbelt. No, but what we do is we provide it in a way, and this is great. I think I'm a great driver, right? But I, out of a hundred points, I scored a 76. I guess I would have passed in, in math with a 76. I don't remember, but what, what we're able to do with, uh, with geotabs, we take all that stuff and we just give you a score, right? Based on, all these factors, you don't need to look at them individually, but you know, we all think That's we're great cool. drivers until, until it's broken down. And so you can say, um, you know, uh, they, let's see, I don't think they have it. Oh, safety so, scorecard. Right. So right. that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So, so GeoTab really seems to, cause I mean, I, it looks to me like you could go crazy with data, but I like that it, it, it's, these between graphs and charts and mixing it up like you you're making it consumable absolutely and by the way i'm gonna go ahead and tell you we're not the only people that sell geotab you can go buy it uh geotab from t-mobile but i'm just gonna go ahead wow. and tell you they don't care about you and they don't right. know anything <laughs> about it so they yeah they'll they'll they're gonna sell it okay well hey you can do this you could do this well it's all great but if you're, if you're not using it and using it from day one and God knows nobody wants to go in here and try and figure it out themselves. You know, when you look at this stuff and you're like, man, it, it can do so much. Well, right. Zoho, the old accounting software we did, I mean, it managed our contacts and, and uh, did accounting and we could do email campaigns and we could do this, but nobody showed us how to use it. So it's useless to us. So well, and that's where onboarding, it's all about good onboarding in the beginning. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Which, by the, by the way, plug free dash cams at uh, elogsnow.com real quick. Oh, yeah. Let's do that. So <laughs> free dash for their wait. So I'm just gonna keep throwing that in there. Randomly. I saw I didn't. OK, so if you go to elogsnow.com, you can get a free mm -hmm. dash cam. Yeah, it's uh, and you put in promo code grand opening. And actually, I tell you what, let me uh, give can us I about. Get one? I want one. Yeah, give us about 20 minutes. Let me give you a specific link so that we'll know when people watched it from here that right. we'll know to give them the free dash cam with that. That's right. We also, uh, Tell them ATI you know, sent you. ATI. Yeah. ATI. <laughs> AT. And you have to chant it like that in order to get the dash cam, <laughs> right? <-I>. So. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but yeah no we'll um I, we will get a referral link out um uh before the before the show's up and we'll put it on there because we're we'll, we'll do a free dash cam and a free tablet now the tablet i will wow. say will come with an additional uh uh monthly data cost but i, I think huh. you'll find that that it's worth it um you know so and and the, you know when we get into questions I, I i hope we get one of the questions as well i here. not use my smartphone Check Instead this out. A tablet. Wyo Trans says, what is the cost of Fleet Shield GeoChab? Mm -hmm. There it is. What is the oh, cost? Great. We actually have four different plans. We're going to give you two because the other two, there's so very little difference between them. It's, it's really, do you want to be compliant or do you want to be compliant and have some of the cool features that we talked about today? So $27 a month, your IFTA, hours of service, GPS tracking. Uh, with a 15 second ping rate, by the way, if that's important to do you, have a, do you have a screen? Uh, do you have a screen that matches the, what you're saying? Uh, yeah. Am I my? Yeah, I'm still on my screen here. Yeah, I like yeah. and I love, man. I love the dashboard. So yeah, let's give us the uh, the. We got the customer. 
They're they're very interested. They're on the hook. You know, they're that squirming worm. They're on the hook, and they just want to know the price. Oh, there yep. it is. Yep, right here. So you have the uh, – the this is your regulatory mode. And then this is your uh, the Pro Plus mode, and this what basically what the differences are is you're going to look at um, active tracking, right, where the dots moving on the map, as opposed to the 15 second ping rate. You're looking at engine diagnostics, reading the fault code and translating it, uh, roadside assistance, which there are some specifications depending on the type of vehicle that you have and what will be offered, but we can cover that with you, uh, and then accident reconstruction. Um, I'm going to put this in the shortest, uh, form possible, but I'd love to see the link, Jay. So you can actually put the two minute video where it talks a little bit uh, more about it, but I'll just share an experience with you. We had a customer in Houston. Have you ever been in Houston on the beltway traffic jam right. driver pulls up, sitting there, gets rear ended by a, uh, think kid was 17, 18 years old. We were able to tell where that driver came from, that they were stopped, how long they were stopped how fast the other person was going when they hit them. Right. So wow. you know, he had been stopped for five seconds. Guy hit him 35 miles an hour, 35 miles an hour, never hit the brake. We're able Whoa. to do that. Yeah. There's a little That's tube insane. in there, with a little ball bearing. Yeah. That measures the G forces that are created when you, uh, um, when, when there's an impact or a collision. So, so for um, 35 bucks, go to, show me that dollar amount. You're telling me 35 was it thirty five dollars per vehicle 35. per month? Right, I can have so that's a peace a of mind if I get rear-ended. That's crazy. Yeah, and and that once again, that's the whole that's uh, that's the whole point for Fleet Shield is you. There's this stuff out there. Most of y'all are probably paying pay in this price range, anyways. Um, yeah, but generally you're just have ELD and and not a whole lot more. Yeah, no, I mean that isn't that it. it I'm just going to say, okay, let's say you've got your run-of-the-mill hockey puck ELD. All right, hockey puck ELD. And you've got hockey puck – isn't isn't hockey puck ELD at least 20 bucks a month? Uh, I, yeah. I, I mean, right? Hockey puck ELD, I'm not, I'm not for sure or familiar with the name, but, yeah, why not? <laughs> For 20 bucks a month or Pic – picture, yeah. pic picture a hockey puck, all right? You know, a urinal cake, all right? Picture a hockey puck urinal cake, and you stick it on the dashboard, <laughs> and, you, and you plug it into something. Might as well be one, right? Right, and, it, and it's your ELD. Isn't that at least 20 bucks yeah. a month? Well, you, you know what? And here's the – yeah, I'm sure. Well, they, they, you know, I've seen prices go from everywhere from uh, – which two of them have already gone out of business, but they were the no contract or no monthly service ELD exactly. thing where you kind of paid for it. Yeah, two of them – one just went under recently. One mm -hmm. went out right after the mandate. But the, you know, and I, and I hate using the term you get what you pay for because that's not always true either. But the, you know, at the end of the day, there there is a certain threshold of pricing that you're going to pay. Ours is no contract, by the way. So you're not having to sign any type of, you know, long-term agreement. And, you know, quite frankly, if you want to know, Justin and I just didn't want to sit there and haggle with people over contract. Everybody wants to haggle over contract. We just said, heck, time's not worth it. Heck with it. We know it's good. Once you put it in, you're going to like it. Why hold you to it? Um, the, uh, you know, with that being said, um, from a support perspective, and if this does look a little bit higher than what you're paying right now, let me tell you, not feature wise, but probably the most important thing that, um, uh, that's going to matter to you is you get premium support. And I wish I wouldn't ha had oh, mentioned yeah. the name that the company that we, uh, that we worked for, cause I don't want to throw them under the bus, but if you've got a cell phone, you know, what bad customer service is, right? So we pay for it. And we're so representative, proud of it. It, representative, representative. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know that's my girlfriend just learned that the other day. She's like, you can do that. I'm like, you haven't been doing like, I, there's no way I'm going to go through all the prompts. Yeah. I'll just, so I'll be so, like, I'll be like, <laughs> I'll give like two <laughs> words. I'll be like, uh, you know, power battery representative representative. Yeah. 
<laughs> so it backfired, yeah, it backfired on me the other day. I don't know if the, the, if it was like integrated with new AI and she actually had a temperament with me and <laughs> like she hung up on me. But the, I've uh, been hung up know, on too. But I mean, you know, yeah, I know. <laughs> that's that's kind of the proving ground. You, in fact, when you get hung up, when you get accidentally hung up on, that's how you know that you're an actual customer with an actual prob- problem living in 1984. Hey, tell me, right? hey, the day you hear a uh, computer right, automated system say, I don't like your tone, sir. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to disconnect now. Let's all meet. Where are you at? We'll come pick you up in, in Kansas City. Everybody meet Jay in Kansas City, and we've got to get out of Dodge. Just cut all the cords and get totally. out. Totally. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, how about when you – how about when you – let's say you're doing a recapture and you can't get verified or if you get verified. Yeah, what if it gets angry at you? That That's oh, going to yeah. happen, right? I, yeah, I, I don't like <laughs> your – I don't, I don't like you. your tone, uh, black screen. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh man! Well, I watched. I tell you what, if if a lot happened since the movie I Robot came out, I, it came on the other day with Will Smith. Don't go yeah. back and watch it now. Now that some of this stuff's kind of coming about, it's going to scare the crap. Well, it. I tell you what, but, my uh, favorite is They Live, and that's why we all got to have a pair of cheap sunglasses. Have you seen They Live? <laughs> if you haven't seen They Live, that movie's off the hook. Man, all right, yeah, that put well, that no, on your no. list. It's a, it's a throwback. I it's, am. I it's, am. It's, it's Rowdy Roddy Piper. It's the best. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh my gosh. Hey, listen, let's do this. We're gonna take a break, yeah. and we're gonna bring Justin okay. in. All right, so stay with me. Um, let me do this here, and I'm gonna um, do me a favor. Hit stop share on your screen, and then okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna run an ad, and then we're gonna bring um. We're going to bring Justin or um, Sam. We're going to bring in Sam. We're going to bring in Ty. And we're going to be right back, you guys. All right. All right. Cool. So let's do this. Let's do this. And let's do this. We've got a lot going on here. Okay. What is Form 2290? Well, you know, if you drive a heavy highway vehicle that weighs 55,000 pounds or more on public highways, you're required to file tax form 2290 with the IRS. Every year, you can do the paper form, mail it in. Don't mess with that. Should I dance for the weight? Go to ati2290.com, ati2290.com. Now, when is Form 2290 due? Well, annual renewal of your Form 2290 for a new tax period must be completed by August 31st every year. And if you purchase and first use a vehicle in January, you must file Form 2290 by the end of February. Keep that in mind. Know the rules. Go to ati2290.com. Just get it done. Go to ati2290.com. 2290.com. What's a stamp schedule one? After filing your form 2290, you'll receive a stamped schedule one or proof of payment. You're going to want that. You're going to want to keep that on hand. Go to ati2290.com. ati2290.com. What are the penalties for failing to file IRS form 2290? Well, equal to four and a half percent of the total tax due assessed on a monthly basis up to five months and for late filers additional monthly payment equal to a half a percent of the total tax due and so i mean you don't want to mess around with this get it done make it easy go to ati2290.com that's ati2290.com get it done i'm jay at auto transport intel i hope this helps you Okay, let's do this. Um, we still got uh, we got Sam and Ty on the way, and um, and I'm still trying to get a hold of how the uh, the screen keeps popping up. I will figure that out. In the meantime, here we go. Let's watch this one. Absolutely. With this particular plan, this is a specialty plan that actually protects you as you as you are in commission of a CDL truck. So when you're behind the wheel of a rig outside of your personal vehicle, anything that's considered a CDL vehicle, 
the, you get access to a plan that protects you in that world. So just for example, this is a commercial driver's legal plan that we particularly offer, we offer specifically to commercial drivers, whether or not you're an owner operator or you actually drive for a company, you can have access to this. So what it's gonna actually give you is tragic accident representation. So that means if you kill somebody in a vehicle, they don't have to be your fault, somebody slams on brakes in front of you. Now you're in a situation where you had a, uh, a multi-thousand pound vehicle that killed someone, and now how much is that gonna cost you to get representation for that? Well, Legal Shield's gonna be able to represent you as long as you weren't drinking or driving or anything like that. When lose a draw, you'll be covered throughout the trial for that situation. We're gonna give you coverage on all your motor vehicle moving traffic violation. Whether it could be a logbook violation, overweight, it could be uh, anything dealing with speeding, uh, missing a scale, any of those things that may happen. And you know those tickets are quite expensive for a truck driver versus us regular people who drive a regular car. And sometimes they can sit that truck there until you pay that fine before you can move it. So this is going to give you access to be able to have attorneys represent you in court so that you don't physically have to be there. You can still be moving loads, making money, while the attorneys are handling those pieces of your business that may pop up. And this is a national program as well, by the way. So that means if you're driving anywhere in the United States or Canada, this plan, this plan covers you. Also, we're going to help you with IRS audit situation. A lot of you guys are owner operators. Then you got to do taxes. It's 1099 income. How do you report that stuff? How do you know what you can write off? If you get audited, who do you call? Well, it's using a tax attorney thousands of dollars an hour just to get help with that. Well, with this program, 50 hours are already taken, uh, taken care of if you're audited, but it'll go to the audit with you and all those types of things as well. The last thing I want to tell you real briefly, that this plan is going to actually give you access to get your will done. Folks in this country, 90% of minorities and 70% of all Americans, we're all going to die. But those percentages do not have a last will and testament to leave and dictate where their assets go upon death. Folks, we can say everybody, let somebody else figure it out, but the state is hoping that you don't have one. Why? Because they get a percentage when they have to get their attorneys involved to be able to figure out what to do with the rest of your assets. But also, folks, who raises your kids? What happens to the schools All they go to? What about the moral things that you're putting into that? But those percentages do not have a last will allow you to be able to get that done. There's no additional cost. Folks, we can say everybody, let somebody else figure it out. The state is hoping that you don't have one. So I guarantee you that you can take care of that. Why? Because they get a percentage when they have their attorneys Get in contact with me at 302-270-4507. Even a fish one to get the money. Jumping out there. <laughs> hey. Hey, uh, hey, do me a favor. Ty, I heard the, I could hear my show there at the end. So check on that for me. Uh, make sure that we can't hear the audio from the computer. Yeah. So check the, uh, if you're listening to the show, now that you're a part of the show, you have to bring the audio down from the show. Otherwise I hear it on the computer. Um, and all right. Now that we got that out of the way, am I hearing myself? Can't tell. Um, we have with us now, we've got Sam Farr. At Lemoyne Insurance, Pelican Trucking Insurance. Welcome to the show, Sam. Hey, how's it going? Good, man. Welcome Happy back to the show. Yeah, it's good to see you again. Thank you, man. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for hanging on. Thanks for being a part of the show. Thanks for advertising on the show. And we're yeah. happy to hear that uh, it sounds like um, some people are coming through ATI, reaching out to you, and that's awesome. Yeah, we're getting uh, getting great feedback. People are are going on there. I was talking to somebody last week that said he was, you know, he's thinking about getting uh, getting into car hauling, and he's just searching on YouTube. He didn't even remember the name of the channel. He's just like, yeah, I searched for you know auto hauling one hundred and one. And no he, way! Across your feed video, he, the only thing he took from it was me. Actually, I was like, oh, it was probably Auto Transport Intel. And he's like, yeah, maybe that that sounds kind of familiar. <laughs> so he doesn't even remember me. <laughs> Yeah, That's, I stole your thunder. That is fantastic. Well, you know what? I don't mind because it's an ecosystem and a family. So if you guys he liked wanna... the information, he just didn't remember the name. <laughs> if that makes you 
no matter. He's like, yeah, it was really good. I was watching a bunch of different ones. Wow, that is awesome. I don't mind the car hauling business channel. I don't, I man, I exactly. It's the car. This is the car hauling business channel, and we're the car hauling business family. Okay, I don't want to get crazy, but I mean, it. What's happening now is, is that when people ask me, because people ask me, you know, what what is this? What are you doing? What's going on? And I was saying it's a car hauling YouTube channel, and it is. But it has become the car hauling business channel. Go, oh, business. Really? Business? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. This is business. And it's YouTube yeah, and it's, it's a channel, right? You, but You're giving them the info they need to get their business going and to keep it going. That's the biggest thing. Man, and, I, and, and it feels it's good, going. which in year, fact, year. thank you. And since you say it, so Ty is with us. Ty is my business partner at CTS Business Coaching. Welcome to the show, Ty. Hey, Jay. I can't see me or you. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. That's okay because I can see you. I can hear you. The audience can see you and hear you. And so, you know, sometimes the Maharashi can't see the people he's helping. (laughs) So I used to say that's funny. I okay. So I used to say these kinds of things in college all the time, and there was a guy down the hall. He'd be like, "What are you talking about?" And I was like, "Well, I don't know, man. I just I, I get inspired to just put things out there, say these things. Uh, you know, you you said something. It made me say something. It made me visualize something. It made me feel something." And it's energy, man, and it's going around, and uh, I don't know. I don't know where the word Maharashi came from. I like Google it. it. Right? Wikipedia. Right. Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Exactly. <laughs> and, and so, Thank you for paying attention during the, the first session. <laughs> exactly. And so I can't always explain the form of energy, but the energy does flow. Is this where we hold hands and hum together? Right. For the- Remember how I talked about Kumbaya a few shows ago? This is it. Yeah. We're going to sing. <gasps> Just, okay. Hey, hang Joe. on. Let me mute real quick. Uh, hang, me, okay. okay. Go ahead. All right. Cool. It. All right. So we're here. Michael's been talking about Fleet Shield, and this is Fleet February, and we're, we're going to stay on the fleet management information. You know what's cool is um, uh, Tiny's. Towing, he's in the live chat. Tiny was saying that he thought that insurance is one of the biggest issues in trucking. Tiny was saying that insurance is the biggest. I was just looking at the comments here to see if that was recent. I didn't see it. Yeah, it was it was a good half hour ago. It is, yeah. It's uh insurance can be a bear. Um, you know, it's it's tough. It's only been going up every year. It's getting getting harder and harder, especially to get started. Uh, you know, as a new venture, it's it's tough. Um, life's a little easier. One of your top fleets, you know, Fleet February here. Um, as you have more trucks and more leverage and more experience under your company and your authority, um, life gets a little easier. But you know, insurance is still definitely a not exactly one of those fun topics anybody's excited to call and talk to me about every day. So you know, it's it's an issue, absolutely. But, um, you know, it's expensive. These claims, half of it's, you know, you ran the ad for Legal Shield. Half of the problem is the legal system. I mean, even these little claims, you get into a little fender bender. It's going to be pretty hard for that guy to be driving down the interstate for the next three months looking at every billboard along the way that says, you could get a million dollars. Call me. I like to sue truckers. I'm going to get you a lot of money. You know, so <laughs> oh, it, it doesn't take much for these insurance companies that you're upset about paying to be paying out a million dollars for a, a little claim. You know, and it, it's, guilty it's, until proven it's innocent. A system. It's a big ecosystem, and uh, there's, you know, it's it's complicated. But yes, he is right. It is definitely um, one of the hot topics. I mean, that's one of your biggest expenses next to fuel and and driver pay is insurance. And it's a fixed cost, so it's not going anywhere. You're, you're not running, still got to pay the insurance, or you're smoked. You know, it's interesting because, like Ty, okay, Ty, 
like you're 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 training new car haulers as we speak. You're on the phone all the time. Now you're hands-on training. I mean, you've got folks that need to find a good insurance quote. And and how how's how do they feel about that? I mean, I see I see communications all the time. People are are, are frustrated. This is tough, man. Yeah. Well, so it makes my job harder because I'm pretty honest. You know that, right? Yeah. So it makes my job harder because I'm usually the guy that tells everybody now may not be the best time to start your business because of insurance. Right. And it, and depending on where you are, sometimes that's the answer. I mean, it, it's tough. I, I get that sometimes. And they're like, hey, you know, what's you got a good quote for me? I'm like, no, I, I don't. You know, some areas, you know, you're up in New Jersey and you're trying to start up. You got $200,000 worth of equipment and you had a speeding ticket last year. Unless you got $40,000, I don't, there's not a whole lot we can do for you. you know? and I'll tell you what, and that man, really like in some places, like you just said, and that's one of the frustrating things of the legal system <laughs> is that, I mean, you go, you dive into the minutia of that speeding ticket. I got a speeding ticket. Gosh, I think that was a few years ago. And I mean, what a bunch of BS. I mean, I just left the truck stop. I clearly wasn't the fastest driver. Ty, you've ridden with me. I'm like old granny out there. I'm the slowest <laughs> guy on the freeway. And You're I got a speeding ticket. Passenger I've ever met in my life. Right? Exactly. I'm, I'm like, slow down. I'm freaking out. I got a speeding ticket. I'm like, what are you? I swear I'm sitting in the guy's car. I'm like, really? You picked up the granny on the road. Did you see that guy? Did you see that guy? But you get this. You get. You end up with a ticket or something. <laughs> And now you are demonized and all this stuff. And now you want to go start up a business. You want to try and get back in circulation, put your life back together. And then, you you know, you're, you're staring. Hey, at hey, hey, I just had a great idea. I read or heard somewhere. Trump has a first fresh start, first start program. Have you really? Heard that? Fresh start, first start. He has it, but Trump? he has a, a program. Well, it's a, for if you're in jail and you get out of jail. But this is kind of the same idea, right? All right. Okay, great. But okay, there you there you go. But what if you want to be a part of the Fresh Start program, and then you go for your insurance, and they go, "Wow, man!" <laughs> well, here, here's what's really cool about it, Jay. And this is no joke. I get pretty ramped up because this is a topic every day that I have to talk to people about, and it's really starting to tick me off. And usually, yeah. when I get ticked off, I start talking to people. So the good news is, is we are talking to people. Yeah. Don't have any names. I don't have an answer, but I do know we're talking to people. <laughs> we are talking to people. Some oh, pretty big people in insurance. And I oh, kind of threw yeah. some of this out at Sam through text, but uh, if we can put something together, man, it we would not only be a hero, but golly, would be so much life would be a lot better. Yeah, yeah. There's. I'm interested to hear more about the uh, the. I'll C call you tomorrow. But um, there's a lot that can be done. There's a lot of there's a lot of disconnects between these major carriers and what happens in reality. Uh, I've talked about some of them before. I'm not going to get into all of them, but I mean it's it, it's very disconnected, um, and it really needs to focus more on the trucking industry and what actually is happening and what these carriers need to be successful. And what they're doing, the, the products need to match the customers more closely. Well, it's interesting. I and I, as I listen, I jump in on the referee. You know, I say that, and then I'm going to fight. So before I, before we get back to the fight, it's who just, am I fighting? Right. Well, well, I don't know. I'm the writers. Stop hitting yourself. So you know, we're we're, we're you know in the analysis, we keep reading. There's a driver shortage which is funny because there's a millionaire shortage where I'm at. So uh, if we can fix the millionaire shortage, we can fix the driver shortage. I'm positive. But in that, you know, how you want to be a driver. Let's say you want to be an owner-operator. Right? I guess what they're saying is you can go work for a company because the company can take on all the risk, et cetera, and keep all the money, and then you get to stay poor, and then you're, you're basically working for them. Um, but – 
if you want to be an owner operator, own your own business, live the American dream, live the fresh start. But if you had a speeding ticket in the 70s, yeah, now you're, you know, okay, I'm okay. And fight. Hey, on a good note, um, I've got Marcellus in here and we're training him. That's fun. That is awesome, man. And since how many yeah. days has he been training? Two days? Two days, yeah. Wow. So and how's it's really cool? That is, that is pretty cool. Yeah, and I got another guy up here too that we're teaching him how to actually become a car hauler, like a driver. So you go <laughs> you do theory. And then you do hands-on, or you guys have done some theory and hands-on? Yeah. Yeah, it's been great. We were at an auction all day today. Got to show him all the little tricks and everything. It was cool. How's he feeling about it? Is he liking it? Yeah. Yeah, he's super nice guy. Came, brought his wife up. I met her. Um, she's really sweet. They're doing a, <clears throat> They're getting ready to get into the business. And so, of course, we've talked about insurance. We've talked about rates and all the different things. But super great people with a lot of potential. I'm really excited for them and for the new driver, too. Maybe, uh, Chris. maybe what we can do is for a new trainee that is looking to work for a fleet, I guess some of these guys are thinking of being owner-operators and some of them are going to work for companies, right? Probably a mix. And so what we can help them do is, as part of the CTS program, and that's what I'm excited to have, you know, learning more about Fleet Shield. Sam, you keep talking about insurance and you're, and you're really helping people learn some of the parameters to think about. Um, and it, within the CTS business coaching, we can help introduce them to these factors to get on a fast track to employment, right? Yeah. Not just learning car hauling, but the bigger picture. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of information out there and there's a lot of misinformation out there, probably more than there is accurate information. Speaking of, you got two questions here, Sam. Is progressive yeah, yeah, is progressive a new MC authority choice? Uh is it their only choice, he asks, and it is it's not the only choice, no. There when you're new um for any MC, it is limited. Um, because of that federal filing that the insurance companies have to post, that's what kicks you out a lot of times. A lot of insurance companies kind of try to stay away from those, at least on the new ventures, until you really have about three years is when it kind of opens up. And there's a lot more companies we can shop it with, especially if you've had a good three years. Um, but initially, you've got Progressive, you've got Berkshire Hathaway, you've got National Indemnity few others um, that are a little more picky, you know, Lancer, Canal, Northland, um, a couple other here and there. Now, uh, so no, short answer is no, they're not. They are the one of the most flexible. They'll quote almost anything. Um, so a lot of times if you've got a new CDL or, um, you know, some other issue, they may be the only choice for your situation. But if it's just a new MC, there should be at least three or four choices to shop around and see, um, depending on what state you're in, if, which kind of ties into the, go ahead. No, if, if that, if that is the choice, do they, what, how do, what do they need to do? Just call the 800 number or is there an agent they can talk to? For progressive? Yeah. Yeah, no. So like we sell progressive. Okay. I would not recommend going direct. It's maybe 50, 50 occasionally that if you call into the 800 number for progressive on their website, you can buy it direct from them. It's one of the only um, commercial auto policies you can get direct from an insurance company, um, at least for a motor carrier anyway, but I wouldn't recommend doing it. I call into progressive to get things done sometimes and I know what I'm doing and I sometimes can't get it done. They, the people you get on the phone when you call in a progressive, not always the most helpful. Strongly recommend not doing that. Um, and sometimes it's cheaper to go through an agent anyway. So get a good agent, you know, go through them, let them deal with it, make sure your coverages are right, because it's really easy to have the coverages slightly wrong and have big gaps in what you're covered for. It's great to get a good price, but it's great to get a good price if you're not getting the coverage you need, you know, yeah, you don't want to pay $14,000 and then get denied for a claim when I could have paid $15,000 and got what I needed. You know what I mean? So you want to make sure you're getting what you need. And Shannon was asking, 
if in Florida, new car haulers should only use Berkshire or Progressive, Florida is probably the most difficult state to get new insurance in right now. Um, nearly impossible. I mean, you're looking, even for a, just a general freight guy, you're looking 25, 30 minimum for a clean account. Um, car haulers, you're looking closer to 30, 35 starting, um, varying drastically depending on how much your equipment's worth. But um, Berkshire, Berkshire Hathaway does not write in Florida. Um, National Indemnity, who's owned by Berkshire Hathaway, writes in Florida. They're one of the only others, other than Progressive, that is even willing to look at risks there right now um, for new ventures. So depending on who said that, um, Berkshire, no. National Indemnity, yes. They are separate. Hey, Sam. Please. Yeah. I had a question from a guy the other day, and I thought it was actually pretty good, but um, he was wanting to know if – so if I live in Florida and you live in Indiana or wherever you live, you can yep. write any any state anywhere. Me personally? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pelican Trucking Insurance, we write all 50 states. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, that's a pretty good question. I was just gonna say is that my you know, you helped me understand better that really depending even if I'm new been around a while, want a better quote, whatever it is, I can contact you right. and you can help me with that. Yeah. Oh. We specialize in trucking. I eat, sleep and breathe trucking insurance. Whether or not that's the most exciting thing to do all day is another story, but that's all we do. It's trucking all 50 States, anywhere you are, we can help you all types of, thing. um, you know, we can do it. Here's okay. Another question. Yeah. For you. Tom, yeah. Yeah. The guy, this was a good one. This was a really good one. So the guy says, what if I went out and bought an existing MC number that had been inactive for a certain amount of time? Then I go get insurance. Yeah. So yes and no. Um, it's kind of a gray area. And in reality, it would probably come down to how it was handled and how much was disclosed to that underwriter that you're trying to get a quote from. Um, the official answer there is that if it changes ownership, they're probably going to try to treat you more as a new company because you're not, you know, especially if it, it's one thing if it's been operating. So there's a couple different situations there. I have an MC number. I operated for two years. I shut it down. Now I'm going to sell it to you for 500 bucks and you can start it back and get going. They're going to see pretty clearly what happened. There. They're going to see the change of ownership. You update it with DOT, which is another question, whether or not you're actually going to change that. Um, so maybe um, it's not, you're kind of skating the edge of, of what's allowed there. Um, and it it's really going to come down to the details of the are you just buying the number for the sole purpose of trying to claim that you've had, got operating experience? Yeah, that's, that's what I would do because yeah. I hate gonna, insurance. A good underwriter is going to pick up on that me. pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not saying I, I like it, but, you know, it's not dumb people. Um, nah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just, it's, listen. Are there any underwriters watching? It, me, right, uh, it, it, it sounds I'm, shady. <laughs> <laughs> and so it is, if it sounds shady, and it walks yeah. like a shady, then it is a shady. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, if you're buying a company, if you're legitimately buying a company and the company's been operating. And, of course I'm buying and legitimately. And, and it's still active and you're just taking over. Maybe the other person's still kind of helping. I mean, there's going to be exceptions. I'm just, you know, I'm just having it, fun. But unfortunately, yeah. for the most part, it sounds like a switcheroo. Right. I mean, right. It, it's a yes, no situation it, it's going to depend on the details of what's going on but okay and here we're getting some good questions here and i'll tell you what before i go to the questions michael did you have something you want to say yeah no i just back when y'all were talking about it I, I think if i understood it right like the difference between calling into progressive as opposed to going with an agent like sam right did i understand that correct yeah yeah you got Earlier. both you can you can get progressive yeah. right sam's coverage is you know, and that I just that was just a great um, uh, point in a totally different industry. Kind of a, you know how we started and whatnot. I mean, when you when you go and you sign on with 
a big company, you're going to talk to that person in time and you will never talk to them again. So even though they might have the best of intentions, you know, to Sam, your business is worth a lot more. You're getting an enterprise level product, but you're getting it from like that local hardware store uh, type of, um, um, you know, uh, support. It, it, it means the world to them, you know, and, and I think, you know, but at the same time, you do have to be leery and you want to find guys like Sam that are that put themselves out on this type of venue that, you know, that that are, are willing to talk to you and give you information, you know. And, and one thing I've always noticed about uh, sales guys, because I'm a sales guy, right, um, is, you know, do they address your question or do they pivot around the question and, and get say what they wanted to say before uh, you got your question out, you know, and um and I think Sam's done a good job of, of answering all those, but then even going back and I'm sorry, I had a couple of questions, but the conversation was so good or a couple of comments, but you know, when you, when you talk about from a business perspective, it's really pretty interesting because the trucking industry, this is the entrepreneurial industry. The problem is, is that the, the, the job performed takes so much uh, time and concentration. You don't often, have the time to uh, to ask all the right questions and and do all of those things, but that, that you know that you would probably like to. But it, you know, if generally if you're if you're doing a job and you've done it for a long time, if you think that you can do something better than somebody else, you're probably right. You know, it's but it's just about I think uh, uh, getting on these type of programs and and talking about it and getting your ideas out there and, and gathering feedback. And so I've, I've really enjoyed the conversation just kind of hearing, you know, because we, we deal a little bit with the insurance and, and whatnot. Obviously there was, a, uh, you know, everybody was asking, well, if I get an ELD, are they going to drop my insurance rate? And everything I thought, you know, heard was, you know, no, right. not really. And I was like, I was like, well, me to me personally, that doesn't make sense, but I don't understand the insurance co- or the insurance industry well enough to even have an opinion on it. For so is one that uh, will. Really interesting. So that's really good to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have tabs on there, they they give a guaranteed three percent discount if you're a motor carrier that's required to have an ELD, and you allow them to access the data. So they just want to use it. They guarantee it's not going to rates go up. They just want it for whatever their you know analytic purposes to help them do their grant, their big picture. AI, you mean? The what? AI. Yeah, exactly. To make uh, Terminator more powerful, so right. you can. Find- if you if you, if you're willing to saw off one of your arms and put on a robot <laughs> shield, you get a discount. Into, I tell you, until they told me it won't make the rates go up, I wasn't signing people up for it. I don't care if it's three percent. I can tell you, some of the guys I talk to, I don't want them looking at the ELD data. I I I don't want them looking at it. Some of them, sure, you know, that's probably okay. Other ones, no, you don't need to look at it. It's not going to be anything you you want to see. Uh, well, and, and I'll say this, that the information that's for, provided, especially by Geotab, and I can't speak for every other ELD, but we can get really granular in the access. And so uh, you like when you pull up the security clearance profiles, if there's just a certain amount that progressive is wanting, we can create a profile that that's just that information. And so you're not seeing anything in excess, just like with the ELD itself, we're not sharing anything more than the, uh, that the officer needs to see. We're not going past you know, right. you know, whatever that rule set is requiring, they can't go back and pull 14, 21, you know, however, however many weeks back. So the, um, you know, but I, I do think that um, more than anything, I guess my, my contribution to this is just that this is really good information. I love what you said earlier, Jay, just about this really being a business because you have your guys that look at it as a, as want to drive a truck. It's what I want to do. And then you have your other guys that take it much more seriously as a business, but you maybe don't even know where to go look some of this stuff, Man. you know, that, that can really help you, you know, differentiate yourself. And there was a couple other questions that I'd like to address early on just about, uh, you know, dispatch and being able to share information because that is over the next, I'd say 24 months, that will be the biggest differentiator Huge. between every, um, every uh, company, large or small, is being able to provide that information to the shipper you know, it's, it's information sharing, right? We, I know what, like when I order a Domino's pizza, I know when they're putting the pepperoni on, you know, and it's like, mm. why at this point, now that that technology is available, why aren't people going to want to know those type of things, 
you know, about whatever they're they're hauling. And so um, it really it, it cuts down on your business costs and it provides a better customer experience. But, you know, without getting too far off the, the, the insurance, deal, you know, from a from a data perspective, um, you know, that type of thing is, is available, you know, to be able to restrict the information. If you want to give a certain amount of access, certain person outside of the company, you can do that. And that, like, I think that's great. I didn't know that about progressive. What if, what if you were sitting just cut to, cause you gave me a visual. What if you're sitting at your hairdresser and you can watch your car get loaded? You oh. can get a copy of the BOL while you're at your hairdresser. I mean, so when well, I'll tell you this and I, and I, I haven't in this particular industry, I don't know, but Guys, technology has come so far in the last three years. We have smaller asset trackers that are about like this. You have a trailer tracker on your truck. You put a smaller asset tracker on the car, and you, and you can notify everybody that's involved in that transaction when it's loaded. And I'm talking about dirt cheap. And and that's what I mean by like these type of conversations. Most folks don't even know that um, – uh, you know, I don't know if y'all have seen that, that commercial with Common for um, uh, Microsoft and he's like, the future is here, you know, and it, it really is. And it's affordable. Data is super affordable. It's the, the cost of uh, any type of telematics has dropped tremendously. And and sharing that type of information and being able to do that without you having to pick up the phone, you know, that's uh, it's it's. It's, it's here. And within the next, I would say that within the next 12 months, that's almost might not be mandatory, but it's also it's going to be expected by your customers to be able to provide that. And I agree with you. And Hotshot Dave is asking, what about making sure the DOT can only see what they should be allowed to see? Almost like the HIPAA regulation of the DOT. Right. The DOT doesn't need to see that you send an email to somebody and start asking questions and all that stuff. They just need to see, you know, your lines and your graphs. Don't. Well, number one, your your the hours of service application should only show them that. It shouldn't show any uh, uh, how fast you were going or anything like that. Uh, but I would say that the biggest thing is is get a separate device. Get right. a tablet. Uh, if you have a, you know, if it's a hot, if you have hotspot on your phone. You um, an ELD tablet that's only used for ELD will should not use more than 500 megabytes in a month. So you know if you're wanting to do Google Maps and things like that, you might want to look at about a gig. But you know, Which, and I can only speak for ours. And, but you know, we can even put a mobile device manager on there where it's just it, just what you want on there. And if you have to hand that device to an officer, you can rest assured he's not going to be able to see. Even if he's nosy, some text messages, or were you just on your phone up until you got stopped, or whatever? I, I, you know, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. I don't, you know. Me neither. So. That's the thing, and it, and I understand, you know. Again, as a dispatcher, talking on the phone, sitting at a desk, bleeding on the load boards from my forehead, literally cutting myself, mm -hmm. staring at terrible rates. I mean, the, you know, everybody's so stressed out with a million things to do and learn and pay for. And then they hear, oh, I'll get another separate device just for my ELD. I hate the DLD anyways. And now I have to have a separate device. It sounds like a nightmare. Well, it sounds like to me, if, if I have an ELD on my phone, uh, the last thing I want to do when I'm having a beer on a Saturday night is look up and see my ELD app. So therefore, I want it on a different device. I'll leave it in the truck, right? So, you know, the, the ELD, um, you know, having a separate device, just look at it as more of a it's just a tool. It's an appendage of the truck, just like you would put in a radio or, or a, a camera or anything else. Yeah. You know, it's just that's what it's there for, you know, do, and, it's, do you, and at this point, it's the cost of doing business. Do you want and yeah. the separate device they could get for free right now? What? What? <laughs> Whoa! I got to say that over right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So how do they do that? How do you get how do you get in on this great deal? What do we need to do? By the way, I'll even throw this out there. If you get Fleet Shield ELD tattoo here, you'll get a free ELD for the rest of your life. Oh, that's a brand new promo. You heard it here first. Where's my Sharpie? <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll find a token, a token driver to do it every week just to pop on. That would be amazing. All right. So and no. I like actually, and I was gonna say. It, can you, you, cause this is great advice. 
can you recommend a way for a driver? Listen, here's your ELD solution, and here's where you get mm-hmm. that device, right? Easy peasy, one, two, three, Z, all that stuff. Easy. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So uh, I will provide a link. If it is, if you go to as of right now, elogs.com, uh, or actually we, uh, or I'm sorry, elogsnow.com, or if you go to geotab reseller.org, um, either one of those will take you to the same site. You create an account, it's really easy. Um, we spent a lot of money, believe it or not, on automating the, the whole system to where uh, you really can't, um, you're going to get what you need on there. You'll get the, you'll see right there at the end, the camera, you'll get the tablet. Um, you'll put in promo code grand opening. And um, at that point, okay. we'll have somebody reach out to you. Your, okay, here's your homework. And I mean tonight. Uh-huh. My, link. Michael, you're going to send me an email containing what you just said. Okay. Right. And yeah. Sam, you're going to, I have your information, Sam, but do me a favor. If there's anything new, like you were talking about a giveaway or something, right? Like, no. No, you, but now I have to make one up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I got my wife's MacBook okay. right here. Okay. It's just eight years old. That's and awesome. If you buy an insurance policy, it's yours. All right. So, place it anyway. I'm going to put in the video. Awesome. Oh, Ty's with us. Whoa. Ty is with us twice. Um, I'm going to put in the video description uh, the information that you guys were talking about. Because, listen, Sam shared his domain and his email and his phone number. Michael, if people want to get a hold of you, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, just email me, Mike C at fleet shield.com. And I'll know that it came from this because I'll I generally never give out um, my email on this platform. Okay. Uh, we have a couple other ways. Okay. I can't see it. I, no, I, I did that. I got it. it. I got I got your email. Okay. Mike C at fleet shield.com. Can people call you also? Yeah, call um, uh, 833-ELD-TEAM. Oh, that's a good – hey, that's a good phone number. Make sure it's fleet-shield. Yeah, I got hyphen, uh, right? Fleet-shield? Yeah. yeah. 833-ELD-TEAM. Dude, that's dope. You throwing down the phone numbers, yo. I was pretty pumped. took me about five tries to find one that worked, but it did. That is awesome. And so that way – that will come to me, to Justin, and uh, to Rebecca. So um, any one of us, and just mention that, uh, that that you heard about us through the show. Um, always love to, to gauge our successes from doing these type of things. And um, we are running free dash cam, free tablet with the ELD purchase. We are also doing uh, free location sharing uh, right now. So what that means is... Uh, you or one of your drivers has a, um, you're going to give the Uber like experience to your customer. You're going to be able to send them a link and they'll be able to see where the truck is. Um, that is the only thing that they will be able to see. They won't be able to see speed or anything. They'll just see a little triangle on the map, estimate arrival time. Um, and so that's just a really cool thing to separate yourself from, uh, from the, the competition. Going back to what we were talking about, about this being a business. Do I now? Especially yeah. when you have those regular customers, you're trying to secure those those uh, fairly direct, you know, uh, dedicated routes with certain people. You can give it to them, and and they'll be like, "Yeah, man, I gotta I gotta use Michael again because I don't, I don't have to call and be like, dude, where are you? I see that you're sitting at the gas station for the last 15 minutes, and you told not me. everybody is doing this right now, but remember, you heard it first in 12 months, it will be expected. We have, we have several customers that they are uh, larger customers, intermodal customers that are uh, requiring uh, that when they're using these carriers that, they, that they're able to do that. And there's a lot of expensive ones out there. You have like Forks, um, uh, MacroPoint, you know, a lot of um, uh, bigger companies out there that, that have a few more features. But right now it's, it's called a five. It's a plug in right into the Geotab app. And just that that's one thing that you can have the confidence in knowing that more than likely anybody else working with that customer isn't going to be able to do. And and uh, so so get a little bit, you know, before it's uh, kind of expected and, and at no extra cost. So 
Yeah, so, we're pretty excited about that. So you know what's cool is it sounds uh, it may I may have given the impression that we're about to wind down, but you know that's not true. You know what time it is? We're gonna have a special guest here in a minute, and so we've got man, we have a whole nother segment. I mean, we I think we've been through we've been through most of the meat of insurance and telematics. But just to keep this party going, because, you know, like I'm the DJ and this is a rave. So we're going to keep <laughs> the party going and we're going to bring in Candy from uh, Jacksport Twix, <laughs> Quick Escort and Seaport Storage. Uh, because the thing is, the good news is a lot of the people that, that listen to this show and watch this show, not only do they have the fast forward button like all of us, but they drive trucks and they like they don't mind a long show. Right? So right now so, right now somebody's driving going, Yeah, I get more auto transport intel. So anyway, so we're gonna keep going. We're gonna go like another 30 minutes, but that's assuming I know for candy it's after eleven o'clock Eastern time right now. So I've sent the invite. Um and I want to jump on a, a question. Go ahead, please do. Earlier. Good. Um, Bad Apples was asking about the when we we're talking about purchasing an authority, if it's been inactive for three years. So generally, once it's been inactive for that long, regardless of if you're buying it or if it was yours, they're pretty much going to treat you as you're starting up again, depending on how long it was active for before that. Three years is kind of borderline, but three to five years, um, generally, once it's been inactive that long, they're pretty much going to assume you know, something's changed and they're going to, they're going to look at you as a relatively new venture. Some companies, again, it kind of comes down to underwriter discretion and how well we can paint that picture for them of what you were doing before and why you stopped. Where did you go? You know, did you go work at Burger King for three years or were you just leased on to another carrier? Uh, but so generally that's, that's kind of right on the edge of probably getting hit back as a new venture type of company. And by the way, Sam, Paul has a question pending also. Where does he go for $3 million cargo insurance? Ah, uh, yes, I saw that one. Um, so th over 500000 or so, um, it, it's actually going to be multiple policies. So you're going to have, you know, say you're with Progressive, right? And you get with Progressive, you get two hundred fifty dollars or 500000 Um cargo with them, they're not going to go any higher than that. So if you're doing something where you need that really high limit, we're going to get you an excess policy that's called excess cargo. And it's going to be from 500 to whatever you need it to be. And then, you know, the first 500 progressive will pay anything past that, this excess policy will cover. So we'll have to go to some other markets. Um, you know, there's, there's different ones out there depending on what you're doing, but that's that's kind of how that works. We got to go into some the more surplus lines markets, usually that they call it. Um, the the main carriers generally don't want to do more than that first little bit. They don't want to go crazy high on these limits. So if you think of it like, let's say on your mortgage, you have two loans, right? Are there is the interest rate or you know for that excess policy, is it a higher rate of interest or rate or can you shed any light on that? It's fairly scalable as far as how much the first portion costs you. Um, it's not dramatically more, but I mean, obviously, if you're, you know, if you paid two thousand dollars for five hundred thousand dollar limit, I mean, and you need to go up to three million, it's it's not going to be two thousand to get that next three million. It may not be two thousand for every five hundred because the chances of you having a two point five million dollar claim versus a one million dollar claim if you're hauling nine brand new Audi R8s or something. Um, which is about the only thing I can think of that would get you to 3 million, but right. Um, you know, it's much more likely. So it, it'll start to degrade a little bit, but I mean, it's, it's not going to be cheap. You know, they, well, and you just made me think like, I mean, it, I, I wonder, it makes me think of like reliable. I mean, they must have, it must be interesting in the insurance field to look at some of these higher end enclosed, I mean, high, you know, race car, yeah, major car collectors, yeah, maybe. Right, you you probably talk about those kinds of companies and policies and, right. 
Just like if you're yeah. if you're a purse manufacturer, everybody talks about Coach and Kate Spade and all these other right. brands. I don't know why I know so much about high end purses. I think I know, but we won't get into. It. <laughs> yeah. um. I have a girlfriend. Okay, so yeah, yeah that's what he tells everybody. All right, calm down about your purses. Cover, about cover story. Uh, somebody go to commercial. Okay, right. Um, we got to <laughs> Yeah, anyways, where's candy? Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> hey, Silver Mint's got a question here. Here's a question for Michael. Does a standalone unit for ELD require a wireless connection? I'm going to say, I mean, you can have a wired connection on your ELD, right? You can plug in yeah. hardwire or wireless, right? Right. So, uh, uh, you know, and I, I just typed in an answer there. You know, the answer is no. You know, you don't necessarily, it doesn't have to be transmitted wirelessly uh, like the ELD itself. Like if it's wired in from the device, it's hooked, hooked into the truck. As long as you have, there's a couple different ways you can send it. It could be uh, via email um, or, well, DOT officers are supposed to have a way to manually connect it to the device. Last I heard, they still didn't have that, and they didn't have it the day of the mandate. I don't know if they if they have gotten it yet, but there was supposed to be a way for them to plug into a device and then download it and then pull it up. Oh, on their yeah, computer. I've read that. Yeah, and I, I do know that we were at a safety conference almost right after – the mandate hit and they said that they hadn't seen it, don't have them or, or whatnot. So, you know, and you have a lot of uh, issues with, okay, well, you're out in the middle of New, Me uh, New Mexico somewhere. Almost nobody has any type of uh, cell signal. The, the, uh, the officer doesn't have one on his phone. You don't have one on your phone. Like how do you, how do you get it across? And that's what that was supposed to be used for. But uh, you know, technically no, you know, if it's keeping the logs, it's plugged into the truck, and you have that information on the user interface, the tablet, then uh, then you're good to go. I will say, uh, I do know that two of them, and, and I'm, the names are just not coming to me right now, that um, came out, they were like, no contract. I think you pay like 250 bucks up front, but there was no monthly fees. Um, both of those companies have, have, have gone on, um, under, so they... Uh, you know, the ones that are remaining do require some type of wireless data. You can run it off of your phone. Um, so if you get like a tablet that's Wi-Fi only and you have a hotspot on your phone, you could turn on the hotspot on your phone just to um, uh, transmit the stuff that's on the tablet, if that makes any sense. So like you don't have to have a tablet with a wireless connection. Yeah, you have repeat, a hotspot so on your phone. Say yeah, that again. Tablets. Yeah, so say that again. Because this is where I think some people get frustrated. Is Here they are. They're in this situation. How do I get the data to the guy so I can get out of here? Yeah. So, like you said, there's 200 different ELD providers, and they all do things kind of, uh, kind of different. So, um, you have your Bluetooth connection, you have your wired connection, and then you have your cloud connection. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if it's if it's Bluetooth, it's a pretty good option. Extremely not secure, and you always have issues pairing it up, just like you would with a headset. Uh, you have the wired connection, which is um, probably the most reliable, but probably the most expensive. Mm. Uh, and then you have the cloud ELDs, which um, you know generally are a little bit more secure. And I think right in the middle of the road and quite frankly if you're thinking long term is probably going to be your best way to go because that's you know that's the most secure outside of a very expensive uh, wired piece of equipment so all right so how does um, geo how do how do you guys do it at geotab so we're uh, via cloud uh second quarter of this year we will have a cable that will run to your tablet to the geotab unit plugged into the truck as a fail safe only so it's always going to do it over the cloud Unless you're like, you know, and I just talked with oil field guys up in like Pecos, New Mexico, right? Uh, uh, Jal, you know, those areas where there's very limited coverage and they could be out there for an extended period of time. Uh, you know, one of the most frustrating things for a driver is when trying to do it right, they're in a no coverage area, um, they're off duty. Uh, on their break, they start up, they're not in an internet connection and it won't allow them to go in a drive and it won't do it automatically. 
right? Um, right. It's frustrating. But what, by the way, if that happens to you, what you need to know is don't worry about it. The second you have internet connection, it will fix itself, right? So if you're right. ever in an area where there's poor coverage, your ELD seems like it's not working right, it probably is. It's just waiting for that connection to pull the data from the uh, – from the truck or the device plugged in the truck and for a hit to the uh, tablet and vice versa. So, uh, right. but it, it is frustrating, especially when you're trying to do the right thing, right? Like, okay, I'm driving, I've been driving 30 minutes. It still shows me off duty. I'm not even on duty. Uh, um, and it's not showing me driving. It will catch up once you reach an internet connection. And, and actually that's like, as Ty says, if you've got your mobile app and you've got your dispatch, and if you're in the middle of the mm -hmm. woods and you can't get your dispatch on your mobile app, you can't pick up cars without your mobile app. Right. Yeah. So what I, yeah. Awesome. And what we like to do. Yeah. We, <laughs> we can put, what we like to do is we like to put an AT&T device in the, uh, in the truck and a sprint device on the tablet. And so you have kind of the best of both worlds where one might not have covers, the other one will. So um, we've had a lot of success with that, but, you know, the uh, the fact of the matter is, is there's a lot of unforeseen things that I don't think, you know, it's like with anything and everybody wants to blame the government. But Lord knows we've all done it, too. Where we started something and we didn't realize what problems we're going to have until we implemented it. Um, yard move being the one of the biggest ones. Uh, That's why I drink ELD Kool-Aid. I drink ELD Kool-Aid. <laughs> right. That's why I drink. Because <laughs> ELD, Those almost man. Dudes have colors, too. Uh, but the, uh, you know, one of the biggest problems was, okay, if a mechanic jumps in my truck, um, what login do I give them? Dre, I love it. <laughs> chug, 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 chug. I can't tell if his video is frozen or if he's... I don't know either, man. <laughs> I think his video is frozen. Nope, he's drinking. <laughs> no, <not> frozen. Hey, <laughs> ELD. <laughs> the American challenge over there. What you it's an that ELD, awesome. man. I will, I, will, I will always take the ELD talking challenge. talking about humming and sitting in circles. Like, drinking. I'll, you can ask us to I'll drink. tune in every week just to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, yard move, just for example, you know, nobody knew what to do when the mechanic jumped in. All of a sudden, you have a ton of unassigned miles. Government said still hasn't given us anything. We don't know what to tell you. Um, you know, they they have a couple workarounds. But long story short, talking about the the best connection, uh, the fleet shield connection is the best connection. So it's uh, uh, the main reason for that is because, and I, I'm going to go ahead and do this plug right now because I think we're about to move on. But yeah, the drivers get 24/7 support from a U.S. based. Uh, call center, first language English, first language Spanish, out of Las Vegas. It's not outsourced. I got a report today that I'll send to you. You can post it. 10 second hold times last month. We, awesome. uh, we boasted about average of 18 second hold times last year. It was 10 seconds this month and an average handle time of a little bit over 10 minutes. Well, so, you know, you know, what's cool. I like, oh, no, please finish that thought. No, I was just going to say that it, um, and it's not just for issues. If you're at a roadside inspection, forgot how to do something, call them. They'll walk you right through it, man. I couldn't be prouder. Like I said, I work for a telecom company. I won't mention the name again. I know what not great customer service is, and I couldn't be prouder of ours. So You know, it's it, what, here's what I like is that what you were just saying, okay, 80% of anybody listening might be like, okay, I don't, you know, I don't need to know this. But let me tell you something. When you've got a driver that needs help, you're in the oil field, you're in the middle of the woods, you're at the scales, and you want to get on with your freaking day because you're on an egg timer, all right? You need somebody, a company, a support service that you can get on the phone, you can communicate with, and get on with your life. And that is the kind of company that you that you are working with and that you are, right? I mean, and that goes for you too, Sam. I mean, both of you guys. And, and you too, Ty, because you answer the phone. I got to – everybody here answers their phone and wants to help you get on with your life. I love that. Because the problem ain't going away. Yeah. No. It's, it's, it's every day. It continues every day. And that's why I – as the, as the father of the family, I want to make sure that anybody that comes here and asks me a question 
you know, I, I help get it answered, get them to the right department, and get to the next one. I want to keep my emails at zero, and I want to keep the chat at 100%. I want to keep the communication going because we do have businesses to run. Right? No, I agree. Well, and I, the biggest thing is, is, you know, if, if we – we pay we pay extra for that for our customers, right? Not every if you go to another tab reseller, not everybody does that. And and how the process would go otherwise is you call somebody and then they're gonna have to call GeoTab and then they're gonna have to call somebody else and then they're oh. gonna call the customer. But we can we all pay extra just for yeah, access. We all know companies, some of us very, very well, that you have a problem, man, you can't get them on the phone. Come mm -hmm. on. And if well, I and, and if we do get them on the phone. Yeah, we'll have somebody call you back. Really? You gotta well, and to uh, to Sam's point earlier, you know, even if you talk with a, a a good sales rep that works for a big company, they they might have the best of intentions, uh, great integrity, but the system in a big company is not set up like that. It is set up that you have your acquisition reps they go out and they 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 come out and find you bringing your business, then it's handed off to a base account manager, and then it's handed off to someone at a call center and and the investment isn't there. And so, you know, the, uh, or even worse, if you have keep trucking and you have to call somebody out of the country that doesn't know one thing about the, the mandate itself and uh, the name dropped one right there, but I mean, but that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a real thing, you know? So it's, it, it's not a knock on the keep trucking product, but the, from a support perspective, when you have guys out in the field, sometimes it's all about what resources you have and how you, you can allocate those resources to help the truckers. Keep Trucking grew really fast, really, really fast. They were genius. They put out the free e-log e app. A lot of folks got on it, grew quick. It's really hard to bring people inside the United States to train them up, and so they outsourced it. And so that's just the feedback that we've gotten. But I've, I've been really, really um, impressed with um, – once again, the, not just the, the manner in which uh, our, our customers are handled, but in the time that's handled and that uh, the, 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 the handle times aren't 20, 30 minutes. They're, you know, they're, they're about 10 minutes long and um, we can get to them quickly. So I just wanted to, to kind of mention that. I think because I, I do think that that's important. Take out all the features, all the cool stuff. Once again, the product's only as good as you can use it. And if you don't have somebody that you can call that's an expert that's willing to help and can fix the problem on the spot, nobody wants, you know, you do not have time for somebody to come back at a roadside inspection. So you want somebody to, to handle it right there. So um, I'll tell you what, it looks to me like um, we're going to have to reschedule candy. Um, things do come up and that, you know, that happens. So uh, and we're also, we're approaching the two and a half hour mark. I know that uh, we've spent so much time talking about business, that business continues tomorrow. Uh, the early bird gets the worm and all these other fancy feast uh, slogans. So, <laughs> so I'm going to let you guys go. Right? Sounds like you had too much Kool Aid. I know, man. Dude, <laughs> finish this Kool Aid. It's time to time to get off of here. Exactly. I can't talk to another person. Exactly. Gotta, what if that was cough medicine? Oh, what if I drank the wrong glass? I'll be. I'm gonna be like freaking out. No, that was the Nyquil. Okay. <laughs> Call an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So listen, guys, if you are still with us and or, you know, if, if you as a wrap up, if you need more information from Fleet Shield, uh, you want to contact Mike C at Fleet hyphen shield dot com. It'll also be in the video description notes below this video. If you have an insurance question, Sam Farr. At Pelican Trucking Insurance, his email address, his phone number will also be in the video description below this video. And I'm always happy to tell you, you need to talk to Ty at ctsbusinesscoaching.com. And um, Ty, I know you've joined us this evening and you've been able to tell us a little bit about CTS that you're training right now. I know you're overloaded with new leads because I'm the one giving them to you. It's awesome. We already need to clone you. 
I don't know how we're going to do it, but yeah, better get her, get that cloning machine fired up, dude, because this thing is cranking, right? That's actually a feature of Fleet Shield. Right. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. 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 And the, it's the Fleet Shield cloning machine. I love it. Yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's good. I'm yeah, telling you, they're good. I'm glad yeah. they were. Michael was on tonight. I didn't know he was going to be here. That was a surprise. Uh, we've been working together for a while. We uh, we love sending our guys over there. I've never had a single. Yeah. You know I, they it, uh, they do a great job. So it's, it's awesome. definitely it was a treat that uh, I had every had such a, a panel here. The whole fan whole gangs back together on that's, one video. That's awesome. Listen, I knew dude, you knew each other, but I didn't know how well. That's awesome. And you know what it is? This is a real tribute again to Shaggy. I mean, look at uh-huh. this. Half of the live panel tonight came through Shaggy's consulting and training, freedom to learn movement. I mean, you know, if I, you're I, not watching the movement, you need to because it's growing fast, man. I, it's uh, it's really exploding. We're flying out tomorrow, meeting uh, three or four folks out in Denver, and um, just really, it, it's going to be a kind of a think tank of sorts of kind of wow. like how to utilize the technology to provide uh, different services, compli- mainly around compliance and stuff like that. But it, uh, um, it's going to be pretty cool. So, you know, I, I told Shaggy this, I'm not available on Wednesday nights. Um, so I, I just, I, I'm never, you'll, you won't see me tune in maybe occasionally it's rare, but, um, yeah, keep pumping that information, keep me posted. And I'm just lucky he's not in car hauling. I don't know what I would do. <laughs> well hopefully we'll all get together in louisville right but absolutely let me tell you i'm so excited and i know sam's got prior commitments so we won't see sam in louisville but man i mean we're so stoked uh i'm just gonna say this now because i said it before listen you guys if you are not already scheduled to visit uh the maths 2019 mid-america truck show in louisville you have got to go to truckingshow.com and click on the yellow register button. It's free. You have got to go to the Mid-America Trucking Show. If you're in any way involved in trucking, this is the biggest show in trucking. And I know there's there's you got Gats in Dallas, and um, then you've got so there's other trade shows. But when it comes to seeing trucks and getting the 411 on new trucking technologies, companies, driver recruitment, technology services, fleet management software. I mean, this thing's off the hook. So I'm really excited that Auto Transport Intel is going to be there as a member of the media. So, yeah, I'm I'm stoked. I'm I'm still angry that I I booked my my little – prior commitment uh aka promised to take the kids on a disney cruise and then they changed the dates from what uh what they did it last year mm. so I'm not going to be there you'll see a lot of my marketing materials hanging out with shaggy and the gang out there yeah um, we'll I'll, facetime you yeah, yeah man. exactly yeah I'll, yeah you could show us you could do like a a cannonball you know bring no. a tablet right. and just put it on a tripod there at the table and right people come up and talk to me love um, it Go talk to Sam. He's he's right there with Mickey. He and Mickey are hanging out. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah, well, yeah we're, we'll, we're gonna it, we're, we'll be stuff. thinking about you. But yeah, man, it's gonna be an incredible show. It's definitely the place to be. We were at Gats with Shaggy last. Uh, what was it? October In, okay. last year. Uh huh. And it was it was big, and Matt's is even bigger. So we'll it's huge we'll at both again next year. But. Cool. Um, it's good stuff. Definitely the place to to walk around and find anything you might need out there. I mean, there's there's everybody, anybody and everybody. We were neighbors to uh, some guys selling cell phone cases at Gats. So I mean, you can get anything from right insurance to training to ELDs to a a battery pack cell phone case from guys from some shady um, overseas cell phone case companies, but. Right. Um, bring your, you got to bring your swag bag. I got a three foot ruler. Last time I was there, I'm not. Uh, I'm not spending a lot of, sw- <laughs> a lot of a swag. A three foot ruler. No kidding. People just walk around and take the I swag. I still got it. 
They, they, I don't even know what they do with it. I mean, how many little keychain flashlights do you need? They'll walk up. Can I take three? I mean, go ahead. I mean, at this point, I just want to get rid of them. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man, not me. It's like, I don't know. Are you going to give me uh, some contact information? Or that keychain is fine. <laughs> no, no, they're actually just for the kids. And though. you know those wheels that you spin? Those do pretty good. Yeah. 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 I mean, even if you're giving well, away, you know, Jolly Ranchers. Come spin the wheel. Win a Jolly Rancher. Right. <laughs> oh, okay. You want to win something? I want to win a Jolly Rancher. All right, listen, you guys, I'm going to let you go. I want to thank you so much for joining me for another great show. Episode 73, Fleet February, Insurance and Telematics. And I'll be in touch with you guys, okay? So please send me those emails with your information, whatever else there is. Make sure I get it in the video description, and let's be in touch. And don't forget to tell everybody that ATI sent you. That's right. That's right. We'll be looking for them. Okay. Thank you guys Thanks so, so much, much for having us on. Thank you guys Voice so much. Great right. show, Jay. Thank you. Peace out. Yeah, it was good seeing everybody. Have All a great right. It was great. Take care. Good night, Michael. Good night. All right. Oh, man, that was awesome. Okay, so, oh, I got to change this. Let's do this. Uh, and while I'm doing that, listen, you guys know. That whether you are trying to learn more about car shipping, car hauling, auto transport broker, uh, car shipper. Ooh, let's do this. Let's make this change here. Let's go to custom. There we go. Let's get some widescreen action there. Listen, if you've got auto transport, car shipping information, you're trying to learn more about the business. And, um, and if I can help you in that process... That's what Auto Transport Intel is all about. Um, dispatcher training. I've had a couple people recently ask me for dispatcher training. Or maybe you're looking for a dispatcher. Or maybe you're looking for insurance. So you want to learn, where do I go for the ELD? Hey, I'm looking for a billing person. Whatever it is. If it has to do with auto transport, dealers, auto auctions. Um, I, I want to help. And the network just keeps on growing. And expanding. And listen, you guys in the live chat, thank you so much for participating. It really helps a lot. And I hope that by tuning into the show, you're getting information that helps you. So you're helping me grow the show, grow the network, which in turn comes back and helps you. So I really I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. It means a lot. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, click the notification bell. And oh, and also comment if you if you're if you didn't make it tonight for the live chat, you can comment below this video. Also, thank you so much for the help. And uh, you know, I, I know that uh, I've got a different laptop here, and you guys have helped make that happen. And I appreciate that. I appreciate you for watching Auto Transport Intel and participating in YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn. So listen, thank you guys so much. I'm going to start up the car hauler. Here it comes. And also, hey, listen, before I forget, this, this image here, this car, this car hauler in the background here, this is from Marcus Dawood Trujillo. So thank you so much for the picture, and I've been using it tonight, and I want to thank you for uh, sharing that on Facebook. Listen, you guys mean so much every Tuesday night. I'm here every Tuesday night talking all things car shipping. This is the Car Shipping Business Channel. Learn car shipping. Watch Auto Transport Intel. You guys have a great night. Thank you so much. I'm out of here. Peace.